He's Blake, bulletproof troop with the expert analysis, and we're going to bring you all the emotion and the passion. And we go live now with our cage announcer, Tyson Johnson. Let's get the show rolling. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Infinite Reality Studios. I'm your host, the Iron. Ladies and gentlemen, your promoter is Sean Lightsell Merriman. Ladies and gentlemen, today's matchmaker, Antonio Jimenez. This event is sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission and the leader in amateur sports, Camo. Ladies and gentlemen, your commissioner, Peter Villegas. The executive officer, Andy Foster. Your timekeeper, Jill Trigg. The physicians at ringside, Dr. Perlman Hicks and Dr. Cindy Pfeiffer. Ladies and gentlemen, judging tonight's event will be Chris Crail, Felicia O, Raphael Davis, and Milan Ayers. Your referees for this evening will be Mike Beltran, Raphael Davis, and Milan Ayers. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live and streaming on Fubo Sports. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready to put some lights out? And now, please welcome to the cage in our amateur bout, Lance Martinez. Lance Martinez. Entering first, this is an amateur fight, but you can feel the energy in this building. Alongside Blake Bulletproof Troop, I am Pablo Alcina. I've never had any pro MMA fights. This face is too pretty to get punched, Blake, but you were a pro MMA fighter. Talk to us about the amateurs and the right path and your suggestions for those listening to us that maybe want to become pro fighters. So the big thing about the amateurs is this is a time to develop your game, to learn some things and improve and find your style of fighting, some of your routes to success, your attack sequences and, and game plans. And so it's really a development period where you can learn some things before going to the pro circuit. Once you take losses on a pro circuit, and those are under pro record, they never go away. But if you take amateur losses, they eventually will go away once you turn pro. So it's a fantastic time for guys to get in here and try and sharpen their tools. That way, once they hit the pro circuit. Lance Martinez entering first outside the, uh, cup fighting out of the blue corner. Yeah, so Lance has in his corner right there. A guy named Georgie who has fought all over the world. These guys train out of Saxon, which has fantastic Muay Thai, one of the best Muay Thai gyms here in Southern California. So I expect this kid to have fantastic hands and fantastic feet. Lance Martinez from the blue corner. I'm gonna keep an eye out to see if he has any of those Muay Thai skills. He's got those Muay Thai shorts though, so we should be expecting some high knees, some elbows, a little of clinching, a little bit of everything. What so, about his opponent? So you mentioned elbows. One thing about an amateur fight is elbows are, and knees are not allowed to the head of a of your opponent. It prevents cuts and it prevents taking excess mileage during the amateur circuit. So we won't be seeing elbows and knees, which makes me wonder if that's going to affect Lance at all in here because he's used to training with pros, throwing elbows and knees. Lance out of the Sexton Muay Thai Academy. Five wins as an amateur. Solid. Let's go to Tyson. And now, please welcome to the cage, Andrew Tran. Andrew Tan coming out, fighting out at AKA American Kickboxing Academy, which is a fantastic gym in the Bay Area. It's the home of champions like Kane Velasquez, Daniel Cormier, Khabib Nurmagomedov, Luke Rockhold. So this kid has no shortness of high level training partners to prepare. Shout out to everybody from AKA. Did a story back in the day on Cain Velasquez when he was fighting Junior Dos Santos. Met everybody there. Javier Mendez runs an amazing team at AKA. All the best to Mendez, Cain, and everybody from AKA. Yeah, AKA was on top of the game at the highest level, had the heavyweight champion, the light heavyweight champion, the middleweight champion, and then later on Khabib Nurmagomedov with the lightweight champion. This is the dream of the crop when it comes to high-level mixed martial arts gyms, and I mean that on a world level. 
awesome opportunity for these fighters to get inside a lights out cage. Again, yeah, there's amateur fights everywhere. There's street fights also you can find. But what lights out is building for these amateurs is top notch, Blake. It's they're giving them pro experience, pro coverage, pro everything in this lights out cage. Let's see the tail of the tape for Martinez taking on Tran. So the only big difference that I see here is the records. Lance Martinez with a five and six record. That's 11 fights. Andrew Tran, two and five on the other hand, with seven fights. Significantly less experience. Ladies and gentlemen, this lights out bout will be three. Three minute rounds in a catch weight division. This bout is being brought to you by Fubo Sports. And now, introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This fighter stands five feet, six inches tall. He weighed in at 140 pounds. He represents Saxon's Muay Thai with a mixed martial arts record of five wins and six defeats. He hails from Los Angeles, California. Please welcome Lance Martinez. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. He stands five feet, seven inches tall. He weighed in at 140 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, representing American Kickboxing Academy with a mixed martial arts record. Up two wins and five defeats from San Jose, California. Please welcome Andrew Tran. Ladies and gentlemen, your referee for this bout will be Javier Davis. So Pablo, one thing that you mentioned was that this is a chance for amateurs to compete on a high level platform and you are 100% right. And this may be amateur fights, but the thing about amateurs at Lights Out Extreme Fighting, they come in and scrap. Lights Out Extreme Fighting 13, about to get underway on Fubo. Oh, I'm ready to watch somebody go, Lights Out. And the fight's underway. Martinez with the white trunks out of the blue corner. Tran from Team AKA in the red trunks out of the red corner. So Lance Ramirez early on, I was oh. watching him shadow box a little bit before the match. And he looks like he has a great jab and straight punches. I'd like to see him start pumping that jab out now into Tran's face. I like Martinez front kick to set up that distance as well. Martinez keeps going forward, head kick, doesn't miss by much. Tran very comfortable dodging those kicks. Yeah, fantastic kicks, though. You know, I give him a little bit more pro. Whoa! Ooh, whoa! The he right connects, up. and the left, wow. and it's over! Wow. Bye! Oh. Bye! Baby! What a knockout! Just soak in the atmosphere. Blake and Pablo told you you're going to see action, and it didn't take long. Martinez set him up with the kicks, but it was the boxing combo that took the fight out of Tran. Yeah, the people have been waiting a little bit for the fights to get started, but we wanted to get the fight started immediately once that bell rang, and we had Lance Ramirez come in here and just turn his opponent's whole life out 30 seconds into round one. Wow, Pablo. Lights out, Extreme Fighting 13, and Tran again. He's a solid fighter, well trained at AKA, but look at Lance Martinez, just enjoy the moment. You know, I gotta give all the credit in the world to Lance Ramirez for landing that. But I also want to put over the team behind him at Saxon Muay Thai. Fantastic striking, one of the best kickboxing gyms in Southern California. Like I said, just racked up another knockout. Let me watch it again. I want the replay now, asking my producer to roll it for us, because this is Lights Out Extreme Fighting. This is what we bring you, quality fights with beautiful finishes. First, the left connects, kind of has him wobbled, and then he sets him up with the left, the right, and it was all she wrote. Yeah, once he landed that first right hook, he found his range, stepped in, and it was the exact same punch that really put Tran down. He landed one more on the way down, might not have needed to. But what a fantastic win for Lance Ramirez here to kick off the night at Lights Out Extreme Fighting 13. Lance with that great, great win in seconds. Tran, he kind of got stuck. And right there, when you eat that first punch, you either got to hug or you have to run. And he still he's tried to keep swinging blows. And that was a drastic mistake. And he caught one with the chin to the chin. And it was bye-bye. One thing that I will give a lot of credit to Andrew Tran for was 
But first, let's go to the official decision for this amateur fight. Ladies and gentlemen, after 34 seconds into round number one, your winner by way of knockout, Lance Martinez. Martinez with the victory. Martinez with impressive knockout. And I liked what I saw from him. Let's go to Bonnie Jill. Lance, congratulations. Now, first of all, coming out, lights out. Talk about once you got that right hook, it was all over. Yeah, uh, he went. He, I put him to sleep. He missed weight, so you know he had to pay. And I want to give a big shout out to my sponsors. Um, you know, I'm nothing without you guys. Appreciate you. Would like to give a big shout out to my team. Uh, you know, I'm nothing without them. And uh, on to the next. Let's talk about your team. What advice did they give you before you entered the cage? They said to faint. Try not. He likes to brawl. You know, use that against them. So just faint, faint. Be smart. And then I realized once I had him hurt the first time, I was like, I just got to finish him right now. Lance, what's next for you? Um, so I know you guys got a vacant amateur lights out belt, and uh, you know what? This is my third lights out win, so give me my title, Shaw. Shaw, he's talking to you. <laughs> Congratulations, Lance. Back to you. I am not going to say anything bad about what he just did. He called his shot. He said, hey, Sean Merriman, let me get a title belt shot. And I think he deserves it from what I saw. Blake, Tuck, tell me what you saw. If I there's love this not stuff. a better time to call for a title shot than after a 30-second knockout kicking off the card, then I don't know when the right time to call one is, Pablo. Especially because he saw Sean Merriman, who's right next to Cage, with a big smile. This is Lights Out Extreme Fighting. I am Pablo Alcina. He's Blake Bulletproof Troop. The fights inside are straight fire, and we have two titles for amateur titles, uh, two fights for amateur titles coming up. We also have six pro fights and an undefeated fighter in the co-main event that you have to, have to see. Woodley is a bad man, plus we have Nakatani. Yeah, Nakatani, a future lights out of street fighting champion. I, I, in my heart, believe that. So, we have a lot more coming up today. We did have some technical issues early on. Apologies for that. But this is Fubo, and this is Lights Out Extreme Fighting, and we're ready for the next fight. He's Blake. I'm Pablo. Let's go back to Tyson Johnson, our cage. And, oh, a quick break, and we'll be back with a lot more. This is Lights Out Extreme Fighting.
the fights are about to continue. But quickly, I want to tell you why I'm holding this beautiful coin. You see, the coin toss, Blake, is an iconic part of almost every single sporting event. So it was inevitable that someone was going to turn it into a show. Pablo, you're kidding, right? No, I'm serious. Flip a coin is a, check this out. Flip a coin is a bettable game show from Maximum Effort and Fubo where viewers have a chance. Uh, they're given 21 chances to guess right. Sounds interesting? Check this out. Let's take a look. Oh yeah, flip a coin. Are you ready, Blake? Call it in the air. Heads, tails. Tails, tails, tails. heads. Tails, baby. You have to buy me dinner at the premiere of Flip a Coin, hosted by Dolph Lundgren, January 17th on Fubo. Flip a coin. You might win, but now you're gonna see some great fights. Let's go back to Tyson Johnson. This is Lights Out Extreme Fighting 13. Well, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Lights Out Cage, Brendan Luscano. Here we go, Pablo. First title fight of the night. Second fight on the card. We got Brandon Luscano coming out right now. Undefeated Brandon Lascano, four fights, four victories, and that majestic mustache. I like it. I've never grown just a mustache. Have you ever rocked just a mustache? For very short periods of time, it wasn't for me. I'm not even a fan of having like a big mustache on a big beard. You get food and all kinds of stuff in it. And I'll be honest, Pablo, it is hard to rock a mustache, but Brandon Lascano has got a sweet stash. I'll tell you what. And it also gives him a few more years. Without it, he might look 10 years old, but he is definitely deadly with those punches. Undefeated Brandon Lescano out of the blue corner. See, we don't own, not only break down MMA, boxing, Muay Thai, Jiu Jitsu, also mustaches, Blake. Fashion tips. You guys saw how we were dressed. You can trust in us. And also make sure to follow us on social media at Pablo Alcina or at Bulletproof Troop. Follow us. Tell us you watch Lights Out 13. Send me any question, any message. We promise we always reply. Maybe not today because we're live on air, but tomorrow, the next day, we respond to everybody who reaches out. This is going to be a good one. Will it last longer than the last fight we saw? Because the first one only lasted 30 seconds. You know, this is lights out. That's what people do here. Turn people's cool lights out. And don't let Brandon Lascano's points look fool you. Like we said, 4-0 undefeated. And now, please welcome to the Lights Out Cage, Tony Scooter Whitfield. So, you know, another thing worth mentioning right now is the majority of the time you see amateur fighters fighting with shin pads and even potentially headgear. Because both of these guys have a significant amount of experience, you don't see shin pads or headgear on either of them. Anthony Whitfield, three victories, part of the Universal Grappling Academy. This fight for the 125 pound lights out amateur title. Yeah, this is essentially, I would say, almost like a pro-level fight. It would not surprise me if we see Brandon Lascano go pro in the near future if he takes home some Lights Out Extreme Fighting Championship jewelry. Here tonight, Lights Out Extreme Fighting 13. What I also love that Lights Out does, they build these amateurs, and you know once they go pro, they're going to want to keep fighting for Lights Out. So it's just a beautiful work by Sean Merriman, what he's doing with, with athletes that are trying to segue from other sports into the fighting game. We saw a football player for the Oregon Ducks uh, who put on a show here now as an MMA fighter. I just love everything that Sean Merriman's built. Yeah, he really puts in a lot of effort to find some of the best athletes and fighters from around the world. We don't even only have American fighters here, Californians. 
We have people coming internationally to fight here. Had a guy on the card earlier on the uh, undercard in Kazakhstan. Lots of Mexican fighters in a variety of other places from around the world. Like you always say, Sean Merriman is building a monster, Pablo, and it all starts with the guys he picks to get inside that cage. Let's go to the tail of the tape. What do the numbers say for this fight? For this amateur title between Whitfield and Los Cano. You know, speaking of mustaches, you see Mike Beltran, the referee right here, and he might have one of the sickest stashes ever, but let's get to the tail of the tape. 20 years old for Lescano, 23 for Tony Whitfield. A big time height advantage for Whitfield. However, Blake, that could be a big difference maker. Let's go to Tyson Johnson. Ladies and gentlemen, this lights out championship bout is three, three minute rounds in the flyweight division. This bout is being brought to you by Fubo Sports. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout is for the vacant lights out extreme fighting flyweight championship of the world. And it is the first fighting out of the blue corner. This fight stands five feet, three inches tall. He weighed in at 125 pounds. He represents Enso MMA with an undefeated record of four wins and zero defeats. He hails from San Diego, California. Please welcome Brandon Hoscano. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner stands five feet, seven inches tall. He went in at 124 pounds. He represents the Universal Grappling Academy with a mixed martial arts record of six wins and two defeats. He hails from Victorville, California. Please welcome Tony Scooter Whitfield. Your referee for this championship bout is Mylon Ayers. All right, we've gone over the rules. Protect yourselves at all times. Follow my commands at all times. Touch gloves and come out. Pablo, we mentioned a four inch height difference between these two competitors, but one other thing I want to say is that Tony Whitfield looks like he's got long limbs. Those legs look long, his arms look long. So not only does he have four inches of height, but I think he probably has several more inches of reach. The fight's underway. Lescano in the green trunks of the blue corner. Whitfield with the black trunks. Yeah, he's like 5'7", with the reach of around 5'9". You see what I'm saying? He came Definitely. out with some long-range strikes there. Jab, jab, cross, jab, load, straight kick. Doing a fantastic job of fighting long. So what does Lescano do? He drops low, tries to get the takedown. Nice block by Whitfield. It was actually a fantastic time. He didn't get the takedown, but he caught Whitfield moving forward. Got under him and almost got into his hips. Whitfield now controlling his opponent against the cage, landing some knees to the body. Lascano also undefeated. Whitfield has a couple of losses. As an amateur, a couple of losses means you have been tested, though. Maybe Lascano hasn't yet. And let's see what Whitfield can do against the undefeated Lascano. You know, that's always the question with undefeated oh. fighters. Whoa. Nice the short The question with right. undefeated fighters, and we're going to see that tonight in our co event with Jake Woodley, who has fantastic potential. But I want to see what happens when his chin gets touched or he starts really getting tested. All goes low again, can't get the takedown, but he's got Whitfield up against the cage. Yeah, I'm surprised he wasn't able to get this takedown. It looked like he got in really deep. Whitfield did a fantastic job of getting his back to the cage. Well, he might get this takedown here, though, Pablo. Wow, Whitfield has some great balance. we able to pull it off. And so it didn't look like a whole lot happened there, but Luzgano really struggled to pick a guy up. That is a lot of effort. Imagine trying to deadlift 180 pounds. It's struggling against you, you know? Who burned more energy? The guy... Oh, nice combination by Luzgano. And again, Whitfield responding. Whoa. These boys are gunslinging in the pocket. There's a belt on the line. You know they're going to be flinging punches, kicks at the same time, both hitting the sides. So one of the things Whitfield's been doing, he's been moving forward, Ooh. and I think that's putting him in position to possibly get taken down. Again, moves forward, he gets his hips taken, and this time Lascano gets the takedown. Interesting how he did it. He kind of dropped to his knees. He didn't go for the regular full body takedown, but now he's got top position. Yeah, it looks like he might be almost, the cage is kind of in the way. Bo past the guard. Inside control, which is a dominant position to start landing. One thing about amateur fighters is you cannot land elbows to the head whether they're on the feet or on the ground. So this becomes a slightly less dominant position, but he can move to mount, which could be a fight-ending position. 
Got side control there. Help with filled out. How can he survive these 38 seconds? What he needs to do is Oh, he's eating knees. Oh, he's eating hard knees. Yeah, and those aren't going to stop a fight, but that's going to hurt you. It's chomping down, and that energy bar is going down. I'd like to see Whitfield explode from the bottom and try to create a scramble to get up on top. Ooh, crucifix here. He's got one arm in the oh, control. He might... Now he's controlling the other. He's Check. looking for that crucifix. Where a guy can't defend himself, and I've watched an MMA fight get stopped like this before. It's a fantastic position to land from the top. I'd like to see Liscano try to do a more dominant position where he can land even bigger strikes. Liscano, final seconds. Trying to choke him out. I like to see him go for the finish, but it's so late in the round with the cage in the way. I don't know how much energy you want to expend in that situation. But I love that he's fighting for the finish. And these boys were banging in round one, Pablo. Loved round one. I'm going to give it to the mustache kid. Barely, just because he finished in the top. But let's look at these replays. Really like the work by Whitfield early on. And yeah, Liscano definitely responding. landed some damage. Here we saw Liscano Ooh. land a couple big shots against the cage. Oh, yeah, four clean shots. And, man, Whitfield just took those on the chin and threw back. And I love watching guys get in here and scrap like these boys are. But once top position was obtained by Liscano, this was the story of the fight, slowly chewing down the health bar of his opponent, Tony Whitfield. Now what's very important here is what the corners say. Lots of times the corner man might say the right thing that can change a fight. What would be the right thing now? Blake, bulletproof troop. I would tell Tony Whitfield to stop moving forward. Hold your ground or slightly back up. The more you move towards him, the easier it is for him to take you down because your hips are closer to your opponent. And we know Lascano's gonna drop once the hands start flying. Round two, underway. Lights out amateur title belt on the line. See, watch, you see the uh, Whit move oh, good forward, combination move forward, and then he gets his hips taken. Just like that, if he's holding his ground, it would have been twice the distance that Lascano would have had to travel to get to his hips, giving him that much more time to counter, sprawl, or avoid the takedown. Lascano leaves those shots open for Whitfield to box, but then he knew what he wanted to do. He wanted to take the fight here, and it didn't take him long to do it. You know, round one I thought was a very close round. It could have either gone could have gone to either guy. I think Liscano by a slight edge. But the thing was, he didn't get the takedown until halfway through the round. He has two and a half minutes to work again in the first 10 seconds. I'd be surprised if we didn't see Whitfield get stale on his back for the rest of the round. Interesting situation here for both. What would you tell Liscano if he wants to finish it from here? I would tell him to keep sliding around and try and get to mount. I would see a knee on belly here, land some strikes, go on top to mount. And or if he wants to chase his guillotine, cool, but do not fall to your back here. If anything, bail on the guillotine, come up on top and try and land some strikes. Oh, he could be deep. Oh, see, because this is what you want to avoid. You drop to your back, you potentially lose top position, and now the guy's on top of you raining down strikes as opposed to the other way around. And also the arms getting tired from that guillotine, which he couldn't finish off, so Lascano did not hear troop, and so, he fell into that trap. So a big thing I like to tell people is, you know, you go for a Oh, but he's got the arm. We go for a submission and the guy gets out and nothing happens. Right. You punch a guy in the head five times and he gets out. You punch him in the head five times. I'm always a fan of hitting people when I can. And I believe the judges also like seeing the, the, the blows instead of the failed attempts. Yeah, now he's got I, the back. If I were Whitfield, I would just separate right here. He was doing so well on his feet in the first round. You don't want to risk potentially become, getting back on bottom position. I would separate, use my length, fight long, and try and make my opponent Lascano walk through as many strikes as possible to get to me. Oh, Lascano picks him up and puts him down. The problem is when they were boxing in the end of the first round, Lascano was getting the better on the boxing game, also landing four clean shots. You know, and I think that's when it got brawly. Had Whitmore been a little, Whitmore been a little bit, or Whitfield, excuse me, been a little bit smarter about the exchanges and picked the shots and used his range, I think it would have been more favorable for him. Nice hammer punches from Brandon Lascano. Again, he's 4-0 for a reason. This guy knows how to win rounds, two rounds in a row where he closes it out strong, where if I'm the judges, I'm leaning his way. 100%. It's always good to make an impression on the judges at the closure of the round, especially when it's close. I think he has had a very dominant round in the second, second round. Final 10 seconds of round two. Just a second fight. Still have six more pro fights, one more amateur fight. This lights out extreme fighting 13, and that's the end of round two. A oh, beautiful fight so far.
Yeah, Lascano's doing a great job of waiting for Whitfield to move towards him, then drop him down and getting the takedown. He did it early in the second round and spent the majority of the round on top. Let's take a look at some highlights from round, round two, Pablo. Here we go. Lascano does a great job up and down. This Being is shorter Whitfield helps him out there. Oh, absolutely. Getting your center gravity into theirs. You know, he just on top, grinding down. I like to call this cooking, where you're not necessarily trying to finish the guy, but you're beating him up, you're softening him up, so maybe he gives you an armor, it gives you a more dominant fight ending position. Whitfield has got to be more strategic in his boxing, controlling his range and trying to keep distance from Lascano. The further away he is, the more his jab and leg is gonna play a factor, and the further Lascano is going to have to travel to get to his hips. And if I'm Lascano, I'm just gonna be patient. We know that he's gonna move forward. Round three about to get underway. A belt is on the line. Could be the last amateur fight for one of these guys. Why not go out with a belt? Round three. No need to touch gloves. They want to come out swinging. Whitfield in the black trunks with blue. Lascano in the short green trunks fighting out of the blue corner. Nice low kick by Whitfield. Haven't seen more, more of that from him. And he eats a body blow. Great punch by Lascano. Ooh. I like, oh. I like that. I like that. That's nice, sweet. I like how offensive that Whitfield's trying to be, but moving forward. This time it paid off for him, but now he's this close, and now he's pr probably going to end up on bottom position again. I'd like to see him start digging for submissions instead of just staying on the bottom. And also, let's give credit to Lascano. It's not easy to fight somebody four inches to five inches taller, but he's played a perfect game plan so far. Absolutely, and his time is fantastic in terms of waiting for Whitfield to come in, keeping that range, seeing it coming, dropping down under the hands, and getting it in, getting to the hips. Had a little trouble finishing the takedown in round one, but in rounds two and three, we've seen Whitfield on his back for the almost the entirety of each round. This is even kind of a choke right here that he has. It's sort of a rest, or a collegiate style wrestling oh. pin, but it's also like a one-arm guillotine where it's tight. Apparently not that tight. The Whitfield does not look concerned. If but, I'm Lascano here, I'm bailing on that choke and trying to secure the mount position. That arm's inside, though, so Tony Whitfield can kind of defend. Oh, and Lascano gets up and instantly looks for another takedown. Whitfield's time's running out. I have Lascano winning this easily. Final 90 seconds for Tony Whitfield. Help out, T-Dub. Yeah, Joe, again, this is why I feel like he needs to have a little bit more distance. But Lascano has been smothering him once he closes his distance, whether they're on the cage, on the ground, however, he just continues to relentlessly chase, chase that takedown. And once he gets on top, it's like getting a wet blanket off you. Just stays smothering you from the top position. The mustache has been in control. Brandon Lescano looking to go 5-0. and oh. Whitfield needs to go for broke here, utilizing the cage to try and create a scramble. He has 50 seconds to, in my opinion, end this fight. Lascano knows this. He knows the clock's his friend. He likes his position. He's fine staying right here another 40 seconds. You know, but he's still working. He's not necessarily getting going for broke, but he's still landing strikes. And it wouldn't surprise me if we see him trying to transition the mount right here. He says 30 seconds. He could potentially finish this fight here in the next 30 seconds. He just needs to posture up and start banging back down. Everybody wants to win the title, but it's so much nicer if you can finish a fight when you do so. And that's what Brandon Lascano wants to do. And he's raining down punches on Tony Whitfield. Man, Whitfield has not given up, though. He has continued to struggle and fight, and even throwing shots from the bottom oh. position. Lascano needs to just start banging on him, though. I wouldn't be worried about any strikes from the bottom, and I'd be looking for that knockout. Take home some jewelry after getting a TKO finish instead of a decision. But the jewelry would still be nice, and this one is going to a decision. Amateur fight between Whitfield and Lascano. One of them takes home that lights out amateur title belt. Whitfield breathing hard. But I like you know, this, I like, is, this is what the quick break and we'll be back with the official decision. This is Lights Out Extreme Fighting 13.
ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Lights Out Cage, Daniel Renteria. Daniel Renteria, Southpaw, 4 and 0 record, coming out and fighting for the 145 pound lights out. Go to Tyson. And now, please welcome to the Lights Out Cage, Andrew Campos. Yeah. 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 Andrew Campos fighting out of the red corner. Four fights, four wins, just one loss. Oh, I like I like the energy. I like the energy by by Campos. How, how do you see him? We have another mustache. Mustache is so far undefeated on the on the night. Let's see if he you if, know this, if he pull it off. And also our referee in the ring for this match is Mike Beltran, who in my opinion probably has the most epic mustache I've ever seen in my life. Hmm. I am a fan of Andrew Campos' mustache, but it barely leaves his front lip. When we see Mike Beltran in the ring, you will see his mustache passes his belt line. He has like a three foot stash. It's impressive, Pablo. And he speaks Spanish also. Si, por supuesto, los, los gringos están aprendiendo español, amigo. Look at that, Blake Bulletproof Troop also speaks español. Saludos a todos los Latinos que nos están viendo. And if you want to watch this broadcast in Spanish, it's also available in Spanish. Let's go to the tail of the tape for this amateur title fight. We have Daniel Renteria, 21 years old, three years older, Campos, same height, same weight, almost the identical record. Ladies and gentlemen, this Lights Out Championship bout is three three-minute rounds in the featherweight division. This bout is being brought to you by Infinite Reality Studios. And now, introducing first, the challenger, fighting out of the blue corner. He stands five feet, nine inches tall. He weighed in at 145 pounds. He has an undefeated record of four wins and zero defeats. He hails from Riverside, California. Please welcome Daniel. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner stands five feet, nine inches tall. He weighed in at 145 pounds. He represents the American Kickboxing Academy with a mixed martial arts record of four wins and one defeat. He hails from San Jose, California, and he is the Lights Out Amateur Featherweight Champion of the World. Please welcome Andrew. Campos. Your referee for this championship bout is Mike Beltran. Look at that stash. Bring it in, gentlemen, bring it in. 
All right, John, been over the rules already. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Touch those now if you want. At the sound of the bell, come on out and handle your business. Let's go. Handle your business, says Mike. Let's get this fight underway. Love it. I'm excited for this one, Pablo. Both these guys have been moving around, staring at each other. These dudes look like they are ready to be let off their leash. Let's see if they're going to touch gloves. I don't think so. Campos dancing around. Renteria as well. The fight is underway. They do touch. Lewis, we already are seeing some stance shifts out of uh, Campos. Campos. Oh, oh, nice trade from Campos. That had some furious power. It did. We could hear that from our commentary table. That landed. And we're on the other side. Oh, Renteria well, with a punch. Another hard punch. Oh, yeah. Campos does not want this to last long at all. Ooh. Good job. He, he saw Renteria there going for the choke. And immediately, whoa, beautiful scramble. Whoa, but a triangle. Oh, man, he's got that in. He's going to be able to finish his choke. I think Andre Campos is about to go to sleep or tap out. If he's not already. But is he sleeping? I don't see any movement out of him. Wow, tap, 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 tap. Tap. It did not take long. He came in showing boxing power with a dirty right. And then he showed submission skills as well. He came with personality. He came with flair. And he's leaving with a belt. I have a new favorite amateur fighter. I like what I saw from Campos. Yeah, Campos came out and looked fantastic. We saw some hands. We saw a takedown. We saw a submission from bottom position. And he's coming over here yelling at us. He is more hyped than we are right now, Pablo. And that's not easy to do, baby, because, you know, Blake and Pablo, we're always pumped. We're always pumped the lights out. But I like what I saw from him. This is an amateur fight. He's now five and one. But I, I, I want to see these highlights again. Watch this. Andrew Campos is putting serious work right here. Blake, tell us So here's about the triangle the choke. He's got it locked in. The arm's not all the way across, but you see him cutting the angle right here. He's grabbing the arm to rotate more. And you see uh, Campos tap. And then you, after he taps, you can see him. He's almost kind of out right here. You'll see him kind of drop down as soon as Rit, or I'm sorry, Renteria is kind of sleeping. He lets go, and you can see him almost kind of drop down before his body kind of caught him. Yeah, when he locked the leg around and he clicked it with the other leg, it was all she wrote. But I liked combos from the first second. When he walked in, he just came in with swag, with confidence, and he's leaving with that belt. What a fun night so far, Blake. I mean, we saw an amazing knockout. A tough decision fight, and now a great submission. Let's go to the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after 48 seconds into round number one, your winner by way of tap out, and still the lights out amateur featherweight champion of the world, Andrew Campo. Team Mustache is 2-0 tonight, Pablo. The Mustache does it again. Sean Merriman needs to take a few classes on how to put on the belt, Sean. This is now a couple weeks in a row, but when you're an all-pro NFL player, you're allowed to do whatever. And congrats to Campos. What a great finish. Let's go to Bonnie Jill. Bonnie, has Sean put on the belt yet? Andrew, quick <laughs> finish. You had some, so much confidence walking into this cage. Huh? Tell us about that round, how, how you took that submission. Uh, you know, I feel like this is what I was meant to do. This is why God put me on this earth. You know, I really feel like I don't deserve any of this. I'm a sinner. You know, I've been, I've been living in the darkness for too long. I've been smoking weed every day. I've been watching porn, but I gave all that up. I gave my life to the Lord, and now I'm here, man. I'm here. If you call upon his name and you believe in him, he could change your life, man. I was living in the dark, but now I'm in the light, guys. I'm in the light now. You guys could do it too, guys. All glory to God. Thank you, guys. We love it. You go to five and one. What is next for you? Are we going to see you in the pros? Uh, you know, I, you know, uh, shit. I, I've kind of given up everything for this. I don't have a job. I'm not making money. I've given up everything just to chase this dream. Uh, thank God that I've been safe. Uh, I, 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 I want to keep going, man. Uh, this is six fights in like fucking like nine months. So I'm just going to keep it going and uh, not stop. What do you want to improve on? What is, what's next for you to improve to get to the pros? Uh, I, I want to be better everywhere. You know, I feel like I can get better. I, I want to I start lifting some more weights. I'm trying to get big, you know what I'm saying? So uh, hit, definitely hit more weights. And uh, yeah, just keep getting better. I'm a martial artist and I love this. So just beginning. Congratulations, Andrew. Thank you. I appreciate it. Back to you. 
awesome moment for Andrew Campos. And I'm going to applaud what he said. He said he, wasn't, he was living a life that he didn't like. He turned his life to the Lord. And here he goes with a big time win. Let's roll the highlights. And then Sean Merriman's going to come in here as well. Talk to me about these, these highlights, Blake. Yeah, so both guys were looking at each other like they were ready to kill each other. Immediately got out it. we saw uh, Campos land a right hand, then Renteria dove under. We saw some scrambling and transition. Renteria came up on top, and Campos secured the triangle choke. Get the tap, take home, 145 pound belt. Here I am with one of the greatest football players ever, and one of the great boss too, Sean Merriman. What another amazing night. You started off with a great knockout. We have six pro fights coming up. Tell us about everything that we have for tonight and also everything that lights out is building, Sean. Yeah, man, this is this was fun. I mean, not too, not too often you get a chance to have that kind of knockout coming out early on. And it's kind of, it, you know, for us, it, I think it set the tone for everything that's happened tonight. That, that fight just happened, man. I, I didn't really expect it to happen. It was a, I thought he was a great wrestler, right? But he clipped him on top. We, I, I expect him to finish that fight standing up, but he got him on the ground. And boy, that thing was tight. He wasn't getting out of that. Sean, I, I want to applaud also what you do for these amateurs and giving out the light, the, the belts for yeah. amateur fighters. Other promotions don't do that. Talk to us because we love what, that you do that here. Yeah, you know, for me it was important, man, because um, you know, as you're kind of trying to make a name for yourself, you're coming up through the rankings, you don't get an opportunity to be seen. That, that for me, man, was everything. To get some of these amateurs up there uh, who we think is going to one day turn pro with lights out extreme fighting. So we want to get those guys, keep giving them an opportunity to do that. And as you see, I, I, no, no doubt about it, when well, he's going to be good one day. He's going to be good. He's going to turn pro with us. And we hope to keep building these up and coming superstars. Hey, and Sean, I have to say this. You're giving opportunities to these stars, but also you're doing giving opportunities to people out in the streets. Street beefs. Tell us about this, how people can end up fighting in the street, but then fighting inside lights out. Man, uh, we just uh, formed an amazing partnership with my guys over at Street Beef. And uh, everybody knows it, man. They, they are so raw, so edgy. Uh, we have they, a video. Let's oh, yeah, yeah. The video you got, you got, and talk about this, it. This, there is nothing like this, man, back here. These guys um going to have a tournament in every single city that they have in. And the winner of those tournaments in those cities get an opportunity to come to Lights Out Extreme Fighting and be a part of what we're doing, sign a contract, and grow with our brand, man. But big shout out to these guys over at Street People and what they built. They just built a, a amazing organization. And you know, guys, it's all about giving back to the people and trying to be seen, right? We just talk about opportunity. What better way to give an opportunity to some of these guys come here and sign a contract with Lights Out Extreme Fight? Yeah, and we saw from Campos how fighting can change your life for the better. Yeah. yeah he, he was doing wrong, got into fighting, and it changed his life. Blake, talk a little bit about that also. So fighting also drastically changed my life because you feel like you have something that you're working towards, a goal, a purpose, or it's almost hard to explain, but where you have something that means something in your life that's almost purpose is probably the best way that I can describe for it. Where now you want to invest your energy, your natural resources, your concentration, your focus, your patience, everything into this dream or thing that you're building. We yeah. still have many more pro fights. We have to take a break. Sean, you're going to stay with us, right? I'll a little be here. bit longer. I'll be here. He's going to be here. Blake Bulletproof True, Pablo Alcina, lights out. Sean Merriman should have been a Hall of Famer. Injuries. Sean Merriman, he's a Hall of Famer building this lights out because it's a monster. Quick break. We'll be back with more lights out. Extreme fighting live on Fubo.
Confidence Studios waiting for the next fight to get underway. All the fights coming up are pro fights. We have six pro fights, a co-main event that's going to be fire, and a main event with Gilbert Nakatani making his fifth appearance in the Lights Out Cage. I'm Pablo Alcina alongside Blake Bulletproof Troop. How fun is this? Man, you can't beat this. Whether it's fighting or professional wrestling, these are my happy places, Pablo. Let's go to another man with a great shaved head and a wonderful voice, Tyson Johnson. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Lights Out Cage, Ray Ace Ostrander. The dramatic pause before walking in with the flag on his back. USA, Ray Ostrander. Ray Ostrander, a veteran of 18 fights, 10 amateur fights, and eight pro fights. He's got the Mexican flag on his back. I'll tell you what, this is one scrappy dude, Pablo. He has not debuted here at Lights Out Extreme Fighting, but I watched a bunch of footage on him yesterday, and I created a handful of bullet points for victory for Ray Ace Ostrander. Are these our first of the night? These are let, let me tee you up, baby. It's time for Blake's Bulletproof Troops points, keys to victory. Yeah, so number one, Ray Ostrander needs to start quickly. All of his finishes are in rounds one or two, and his opponent has only been finished in rounds one and two. Next, punches in bunches. He needs to throw multiple strikes in sequence and follow up when his opponent is hurt. Next, look for the finish. He should aggressively look to finish Pena as soon as possible. The longer the fight goes, the more likelihood or more that Pena ends up walking away with the win. We will have Blake's keys to victory throughout the night. Ray Ostrander entering first. Very, very calm Ray Ostrander. Like I said, veteran of 18 fights. Eight of those being professional fights. And he is, so this is no strange place to him. He has been under the bright lights many times, but there are no lights as bright as lights out extreme fighting. So this is one of the biggest fights of his career. And he has a test in front of him in Chris Monteleone Pena. Let's go to Tyson Johnson. Well, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the lights out cage, Chris Monteleone Pena. Chris Pena. Chris Monteleone Pena. The nickname Monteleone means lion killer. But it's also used for rear naked choke, which is the name in Spanish of a rear naked choke is Mataleon. So this it's, it's, it's a great nickname for two reasons. Shows that MMA and it also shows that he wants to kill lions. But one thing about him, he does not have any submission victories. He does, however, have seven professional fights. This dude has been fighting since 2013. That's longer than me, Pablo. And he, but however, he had a nine-year layoff. He's only had one fight since that layoff. All his wins have been by decision, but he's never finished a guy. And he's always been finished in the first or second round in his losses. I've watched a bunch of footage on this guy, too, and I have a handful of bulletproof troops, bullet points for victory for Chris Montaleo Pena. Number one, use movement to control the pace of the fight. This will allow him to buy him time to find openings and avoid damage and elongate the fight. Number two, take his time. Don't rush in and work around and create openings. He does not need to get in any reckless exchanges. Third point, avoid reckless exchanges. Movement and finding his openings will allow him to prolongate the fight and more than likely get a decision win here against Ray Ace Ostrander. 
36 years for Ray, 34 for Chris. This fight at 155 pounds, almost the same height, slight height advantage for Ray Ostrander. Ladies and gentlemen, this professional lights out bout is three five minute rounds in the lightweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This fighter stands five feet, nine inches tall. He weighed in at 155 pounds. He represents the Silverback Fight Team. Ladies and gentlemen, with a mixed martial arts record of three wins and five defeats. He hails from Thousand Oaks, California. Please welcome Ray Ace Ostrander. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner stands five feet, eight inches tall. He weighed in at 155 pounds. He represents Tillis MMA and Mata Leon Combat Club. Ladies and gentlemen, with a mixed martial arts record of three wins and four defeats, he hails from Hollydale, California. Please welcome Chris Mata Leon Pena. Your referee for this bout is Milan Ayers. Amateur fights done. Pro fights. From here on out, we have six. We are live on Fubo. Pena Ostrander. Fight is underway. Pena out of the red corner with the pink trunks. Ostrander out of the blue with the blue. Ostrander's doing a good job Ooh. of pumping that jab out there and trying to utilize some straight attacks. I'd like to see him follow those up instead of throw one at a time. He's got heavy, heavy kicks as well, does Ostrander. See, like there, another single attack where I said punches and bunches for his keys to success. I'd like to see him oh. follow. Oh. And like we just saw there, we saw a jumping knee that almost landed Ace Ostrander's head. Now that we're in the pro fights, you can knee and elbow to your opponent's head, unlike the amateur fights on before this. Ostrander's really trying to dig in and get that takedown. Good work by, good work by Pena, turning him around. Now has him against the cage. Hard knee. Yeah, he did a good job of taking those underhooks in and then changing the position. Right now, he has what we call Ooh. double underhooks. You can see his arms are under both of Ostrander's arms. I'd like to see him drop down to the hips oh. and try and pull out Ostrander's hips out from underneath him and get the takedown against the cage. Those knees are causing serious damage. That's five, that's six knees to the body of Ray Ostrander. Pena saying, you want one more? Here I go, I'm aiming. And not just that, but he's being completely Seven. controlled against slow. Eight knees by Pena, Ostrander responding. You know, not only is he landing these, but he's controlling the position. You can see Ostrander was really trying to get out, and he's stuck, and that can be a little bit demoralizing, especially when you're eating these big, thumping knees to your liver. And then he changed it up. You need him in the leg also. You need him all over the place. Nine knee strikes that Ostrander couldn't block. Yeah, Pena, I said he should go for the takedown, but man, he has been doing a fantastic job of just controlling his opponent against the cage. Still has double underhooks, it looks like. Oh, no. Pena did a good job, or Austin did a good job of digging the Ooh. underhook in. And he worked him all the way around the cage that he's right in front of us, and the knees keep flying. Yeah, those are big knees. You can hear that thud when that knee slams into Ostrander's body. And again, he's got double underhooks, but he's doing a great job of just utilizing this control who hands in the cage. He's doing a great job of controlling his opponent against the cage. I don't want to see him reach in and grab the cage. It'll look like he was just reactionary, but it could cause Whoa. him. He's got a groin shot. He's right in front of us. A little warning. Yeah, definitely looked like a groin shot. He got a warning to grab the cage right maybe three to five seconds before that. But these, when you're going into this position, they're inevitable to sometimes hit the groin. Didn't look intentional to me, and I don't think Pena was trying to be cheap by landing that. I think it just had to happen to be one of those things that happens. I do not think a point should be deducted here. Mylon Ayers does not deduct a point, which I believe is the right call. A warning, though. You know, you got grab the cage, groin shot, a couple of quick fouls, my man. I don't think he's worth taking a point yet. But smart by Ostrander to take his time, catch a breather, try to work out those <laughs> knees to the stomach that he was eating. So a good moment here for Ray Ostrander trying to settle back in. 
And not just that, but now he gets reset at range. He's not controlled against the cage anymore, and now he could probably be a little bit smarter about avoiding that position again. Ostrander's last fight back in November. Pena hasn't fought since March of last year. I'd like to see Ostrander start to let his hands go. We just saw him on defense for the last maybe two minutes. Oh. Yes. Nice little uppercuts that connected. I want to see him disengage here, though. I wouldn't play the clinch game, potentially get your back stuck up against the cage again, and then be stuck in the position that he was in. Beautiful sprawl there, and takedown defense by Pena, and now he's got Ostrander against the cage again, the same position he was landing all those knees. Yeah, if it's not, if it's working, keep at it, and that's what Pena's doing, trying to hook those arms, push him up against the cage and control it, and here come the knees. Yeah, you saw him actually drop there for a little bit of a takedown. He saw it, felt some resistance, so he just came back up and landed several more knee strikes in the body, which those really take the toll on the proverbial health bar that you have. Might not look the same as a big punch in the head, but man, does it take away. Very strong knees to the stomach again by Pena. Those are definitely causing damage. Not many punches. He hasn't thrown hardly any punches, but I've counted at least 20 knees so far. You know, it's been, it's been very one-sided from this controlling position. Once Pena gets these double underhooks against the cage, it's very hard for you to even get any power behind those strikes. That's why I said Ostrander should have disengaged instead of getting into the clinch. Oh, Ooh, he's... Elbows by Pena. Yeah, Pena keeps bringing those elbows up now. I think it'll continue to open things up. Ostrander looks really focused on the knees coming down low that I think we're going to see some left. Oh! oh! He's working it up higher. And here I think the left elbow. Bang, just like that. I think he has a fantastic, methodical way of continuing to smash his opponent. Lands his knees from a controlling position. Opponent accepts it. He either comes high. Oh, I don't know if that was... Well, this is definitely a record of most knee strikes in a lights out fight. We've gone five minutes straight of only knee strikes, a couple of elbows, and that's it. Impressive. Yeah. Pena says, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm doing. Yeah, it, it hasn't been incredibly, I don't know, visibly damaging, but, man, he has been just chopping. It has been very one-sided. These statistics, I can only imagine what they are. It's not very many. Whoa! Oh! As soon as he's thinking about those knees again, comes back up for the elbow. Oh, oh! and then the punch. It's Final Pena. 15 seconds. Oh, Strander said, I had enough, and so did Pena, and he tried to finish it in the first round. The knees were setting up what was coming. Yeah, like I said, very methodical way of landing the knees once he focuses on the knees, bring the knee to the body, bring the knee higher, land it up. I want to see some replays, because it looked like Pena almost put Ostrander away here at the end of the first round. Here we go. Pena first with the knees. Man, to the body, then the up. legs, and then he moved it up to the head. Yeah, bringing those bad boys upstairs, and when you're just not sure where you're going to get, here's probably the left elbow. And really, boom. And he's just ripping the, ripping the knees to the body, and then coming high. Oh, Strainer did a great job of struggling and getting himself off of the cage there. He needs to stay off of the cage there in round two, because he does not want round two to look like round one. And he does that by fighting at range and preventing the clinch. And Pena will be happy repeating everything exactly the same way. Yeah, if I'm Pena's corner, I just say, hey, good job. We're doing that again. Don't get reckless. When he comes in, we're going to clinch him, put him against the cage. Fun round for Pena. Not so much for the stomach of Ray Ostrander. Let's see how Ray responds. But in this game, one mistake, and you could go from being on top to being lights out. Ostrander coming strong with a strong kick to the body. Let's see if he's able to dig this leg out. If he's able to suck that leg in, which is going to be difficult once it starts getting sprawled back. Payne is doing the right thing. Oh, but if Ostrander now does the right counter counter, he's able to suck the hips out, but no, Payne gets behind and almost has a crucifix-like oh. position from the top. Hammer punches right in front of us. Pena easily won round one. Elbows to start round two. Yeah, and these are just unanswered, controlling strikes. They're not necessarily brutal, but you're just chopping at a guy, and he has no build. Mylon Ayers looks like he might step in to protect the uh, 
the competitor that is unable to defend himself, but Ostrander does not want to go home and continues to struggle and fight from this bad position. That's what I love about Lights Out, the Warriors we put inside this cage. Don't give up, and Ray Ostrander still in there. Pena, however, putting great work in, pressing him against the cage, looking for a takedown. Blake, help out yeah, Pena you know, if he wants he to went, finish this. He went from the frying pan into the fire, because now he's back to where he spent. Oh! Whoa! This is how he finishes it. I want to see him bring the left elbow up now. Wow, those were two big knees to Ostrander's face there. Potentially fight-ending knees if he continues to land those. A whole fight dominated watch, with that left watch knee. Watch the elbow come over the top right here. You can see him controlling the right arm of Ostrander. Boom! Beautiful. Back to double underhooks. Watch him continue a few more knees to the body. He lets the arm escape. Yeah, you can see putting yeah. his left hand on the bicep. And you're going to see him come over the top with that left elbow right here, probably. And it would not surprise me if he lands this nice and he potentially puts... Oh! Oh, man! He switched it up. He fainted with the elbow, went with the knee to the head instead. Chris Pena's knees yeah. are dominating this. Man, I read elbow, too. Fantastic job of staying unpredictable from this position and doing damage. Another strong knee. Heavy oh, those legs whoa. to the face. And Ray Ostrander is like stuck can't get out, and it's just the frustration starting to show for Ray. Bro, but he's not quitting, and I give him a ton of pr props for that because a lot of guys will start to look for a way out when they get stuck in really bad positions like this. But there has not been any quit in, in... Oh, man! And he's ducking those elbows not by much. Pena trying to finish this in round two, and he still has two minutes and 20 seconds to go in this round. If I'm here, if I'm Ray Ostrander, I disengage, disengage, disengage. Fight at range. Don't wrap up. And let your hands start flying, my man. But Pena says, I can kick from far away, too. Obviously, he wants to lock up again with the knees. Man, Pena has been doing fantastic. Oh, oh a jumping knee to the body. Pena saying, what else do I have oh. to do? Oh, now the Muay Thai clinch. I was asking for it because they were knees, but not from the clinch. What is this, Blake? So he's digging the underhook. We see uh, Ostrander go over the takedown. He dug the underhook, and so now he's got that right arm completely controlled up. Where Ostrander's never going to be able to get that takedown. Now he's stuck back against the cage. We got another 90 seconds in round two. And the thing about this position on the cage, it's going to be hard to probably knock a guy out unless it's a knee to the head. But man, you are just chopping down at that health bar. I want to see Ostrander get off the cage here. He needs to get his back off this cage. He needs to go for broke to get his back off this cage. Otherwise, he's just going to continue to eat alive by paying you with those knees and elbows. But amazing cardio also by Ostrander to be eating those knees and still be in this and now attempting something from, from the bottom. You know, I almost think we're past cardio. We're down to heart with yeah. the amount of damage. Heart and other body parts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> And man, he's still continuing to try and fight. Not much success when he goes for offense, but he is oh, oh, man. And you can see Pena now getting frustrated, saying, what do I have to do to finish this fight already? You know, he's, Pena's been pacing himself with his output, so it's not like he's going to probably blow through all of that energy. Ooh, are we going to see oh. top position control? 37 seconds left on the clock in round two. Elbows now coming down from Chris Pena. Attacked him with the left knee. Now he's got the ground and pound. Oh, man, he's, he's got, got 27 got the seconds. It would not surprise me if he is able to finish this fight. Now's the time, in my opinion, for Pena to go for broke. He might be able to get to his first finish in his professional career here and at Lights on Street Fighting 13. And his nickname is? Mata Leo. Which means... The lion. Lion. And it also means rear naked choke. I thought he would go for it there, Blake. And instead, he just went for the pounding. You know, I'm usually not. Whoa. Oh, the no, referee getting the close. Stop. Whoa. No, no, no. I think the round finished. You're right. Oh, man. I, I think the corner might tell Ray to just stay sitting, right? I mean, you, you want him to come out. He's showing heart. He gave his all, but he's taking a punishment here. Would you tell the, what would you tell him in the corner? You know, I think that now is potentially one of the times where it wouldn't hurt to throw in a towel for a guy. Where sometimes we need to be protected from ourselves because Ray's not, or, oh yeah, Ray's not going to get in there and quit. And as you can see, round two is more of round one, where we see big, oh, oh look at that. Big, right on the big chin. strikes landing. And here from the mountain looking, I always start to see Ray bleeding. He's
his body's taking a lot of mileage yeah, and damage. And, and it's also the point, if your fighter's not going to be able to win the fight, don't let him keep taking punishment. You know what I'm saying? That's, I, I that's know th exactly why I say potentially sometimes we need to be saved from ourselves. Ray does not have an ounce of quit in him. But who knows? One punch could change the fight also, so... You know, that's all that it takes. But what we what that means is Ray's going to need to come in and let his hands fly. Ray needs a finish. I have, man, that's probably a 10-9 and a 10-8, maybe both 10-8 rounds. Oh, Ray, a thousand percent needs a finish, but he comes up with a nice uppercut and combo. Ray saying, I am still here. I'm not throwing in a towel. This is lights out, baby. Ray kicking, punching Pena against the fence, and here come the knees. Oh, man. That good. might have been all the gas Ray had left. You know, but I'm not mad at him for not trying mad. to go out there and look for the finish. You know, that's exactly what he should be doing in this position. Spent some gas going for it. Now Pena has him back where he has probably been putting in a ton of preparation for this. Whoa. No strander now has it. Disengage here. If you're Ray, disengage. Why stay there? We'd love to ask Pena after the fight if the knees were the plan from the get-go, even before the fight started, because that's what it looks like to me. It With how like methodical this is, it definitely looks like he put a lot of preparation into this position, where he's been utilizing attacks, utilizing progressive indirect attacks and then build on those initial attacks. It has been a very high-level display of clinch work out of Chris Pena tonight here at Lights Out Street Fighting 13. And again, we have to applaud Ray Ostrander. He's had his chances. He's landed a couple of blows, but just way too little. And now his, it's a big cut on the face. Yeah, he, I feel like he's kind of accepted that he's going to, okay, I'm going to play against the cage. If I'm Ray here, I am going for broke to try and get off this. Whoa, Ooh. what a big knee. He's got to be careful. The knee or the flying elbow or both. And that's the only thing Pena's been doing, but it's been working great. Why try something else? 100% of it ain't broke, don't fix it, Pablo. Again, he's got the knees, puts the face up against, even if Ray Ostrander punches him, he's gonna have no power behind this. Oof. Oh, nice duck under by Pena. And like, I'm gonna continue to say this, as soon as there's a little separation, Ray starts throwing hands back at Payton. There is not an ounce of quit in this guy. And it is, as you can tell, very hard to beat somebody that'll never quit. Oh, Payton gets the other takedown. So one thing worth noting here is they are right in Payton's corner. Yeah, you can that... see his coaches in the background coaching him. I believe that we're going to see them coach him into a dominant position. He might even have mount secured here. Once he gets to mount, it would not surprise me if he's able to finish this fight. We got 2.45 of the clock left, Pablo. Yeah, and he's got his coach literally 12 inches from him, telling him exactly what he needs to do, what he has to do, and more importantly, telling him, you have the fight. One, do not blow it by making one mistake here. But, yes, they would like to finish it. Yeah, and it, it is priceless to have somebody who's outside the storm able to give you commands that are that close and easy to hear and understand. And he's got two minutes and 15 seconds left on the clock. You don't need to hurry here. If he gets to mount, he's going to be able to land some strikes, and it would not surprise me. Oh, man, he's got that knee back in. Ray just will not give up, and I love it. I respect it so much. Look at all the blood covering the Fubo Sports logo. Shout out to Fubo Sports. You can see all the lights out, extreme fighting events on Fubo Sports. Oh, full mount secured for Chris Payne. Are we going to see a finish? He's got a minute 48. Applauding for Ray Ostrander that he's still in this fight. And not quitting. I've seen guys like, I've seen guys with a lot more experience on higher levels that'll give up and quit there. And Ray has been given plenty of opportunities to choose to do that, and he hasn't taken any of them. Well, Chris trying to win, get the back. There it is. He's got an opening for it, Blake. You know, so if he's just chopping down at this, landing more and more strikes from the top position that are unanswered, the thing is he needs to secure a dominant position or really hurt. Oh. Mm. Needs to make sure to not do anything illegal either. You do not want to lose this fight uh, kneeing the guy on the or kicking him in the head when he's down. 12 to 6 elbow. I agree 100%. Something silly. You've come this far and you're that far, in my opinion, ahead on the scorecards. You definitely want. Whoa! Oh, oh man. Oh. I would have loved to have seen a Hail Mary on Ostrander. What a turn of events that would have been for him to get on Payton's back. 
Final 40 seconds. Pena's got his back. I think Pena needs to shoot that right hand through the neck. You can see him trying to secure the hand. You're going to watch him peel his right hand out and then likely shoot it around the neck. Oh, oh securing back position. I can't see the exact legs. 25 seconds left on the clock, though. He is on the home stretch for taking home another decision win. He had the finish, had his man in the corner, but we have to give credit to Ray Ostrander and his heart. Held on for the 15 minutes, face bloodied, cut, bruised. But they finished the fight going to a decision. Credit, credit to Ray Ostrander, but Chris Pena definitely put on a show. We're gonna take a quick break and we'll be back with a lot more. We still have five pro fights coming up. This is Lights Out Extreme Fighting. With Blake Bulletproof Troop, I am Pablo Alcina. Quick break and we'll be back with the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a big round of applause for both of these gladiators. And now, ladies and gentlemen, after three exciting rounds, all three judges score the bout 30-26 for your winner by unanimous decision out of the red corner, Chris Madalio. Chris Pena with the win. Bonnie Jill with the interview. First of all, Chris, congratulations. And your last fight was in March. How were you able to keep up that stamina? Um, my last fight was in March, but before that, I had a nine-year break. So I've been out of the game for a minute, but I'm working my way back in. I had a couple injuries after my fight in March, but I want to be more active. You know, this, this game isn't forever, so I want to take advantage of the time I do in it. Now your corner was really entertaining. They were saying they felt like your opponent was hey, Papa, overwhelmed. Did you see that, that in, your, in his face as well? Cool? Um, I couldn't see it because I was kneeing him and shit. But um, I, I could feel it. You know, I'd, I'd hit him in the body. I'd hit him with some shots, and he'd, he'd complain. He'd do little whimpers, and I'd be like, all right, you're hitting me, and it hurts, but I ain't going to show you that it hurts. You know what I mean? Those knees were dominating. So many knee strikes. How did you know that was going to be working for you? Uh, I didn't. Uh, I was just in the position to throw him, and I'd hear my coaches Knee, knee, elbow, elbow. So I was just trying to be relentless with it. And they felt great every time I landed them. So why not continue going to the look? Feels good. It takes you to four and four. A new start for you. What can we see for you next? Uh, man, just keep going. 
there's no stopping. I just want to continue. I have a daughter. She's at home right now, so she's not here, but she's three. And I want to be able to take advantage of the time I do have now so she's old enough to do her own activities. And I just dedicate my full time to her in that sense. So I just want to take advantage of this right now while she's still fairly small, because once she's bigger, all my time's going to be dedicated to her. Uh, lastly, what can you say about your opponent? Because he was very resilient. He would not go down. Oh, man, he's tough. I, 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 was, I was aiming to finish him in the first. Um, he cracked me pretty hard at the beginning of the fight with the jab. I was like, holy fuck. But um, <laughs> I was like, you know what? That's cool. Woke me up, and I wanted to get mine back. Congratulations. Great fight. Great Thank dominating you. fight. Appreciate it. Back to you guys. Chris Pena definitely dominated, won the fight. Judges got it right, and Pena just drove him crazy with those knees. Impressive work from Pena. Hey, but we gotta applaud the opponent, because he took some punches. I would have been fine with him throwing in the towel. I'm gonna applaud him. What a gutsy performance. Man, Ray Ostrander is as tough as they come, but fantastic performance out of Chris Pena. He was beating his opponent like a drum, basically nonstop from the beginning of the fight to the end of the fight. Let's watch the highlights, and this drum was, was getting beaten with a knee for most of the fight. Again, Ray Ostrander had a chance, and we heard Pena talk about that, that strong jab that caught him, but after that, it was all this. Yeah, controlling him against the cage, landing these knees to the body or the leg, and then as soon as Ostrander started trying to protect the lower body, you'd see a knee come high, boom, like that, or we'd see an elbow come back over the top, and he just continued to mix up these knee strikes against the cage. Oh, another big knee by Pena against the cage. And you heard him say in the interview, and Blake mentioned it also, he fought in March, but before that, he hadn't fought for nine years because of injuries, because of life. So he knows it's not a long game, but he got back, got a big win. He looked really good. Looking forward to seeing him coming up more. Yeah, what a scrap that was. And Pablo, let me tell you about another scrap that's coming up. I got a professional wrestling match next weekend for the National Wrestling Alliance at their event, Paranoia in Fort Lauderdale, going against Joe Alonzo. So, so, Joe, I hope you're out there training right now and not partying, because I'm coming to turn your lights out. Quick commercial break, and we have a lot more coming up. This is Lights Out Extreme Fighting 13, live on FUBO. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Lights Out Cage, Bryant the Beast Shell.
another pro fight. Entering first, Brian Shell. This fight, 155 pounds. Yeah, Brian the Beast Shell, veteran of 12 fights, four professional fights, and eight amateur fights. This dude has been fighting since 2015. Been pro since 2021. He trains out of the training lab with Mark Munoz. I watched a lot of this guy. And I've known this guy for a while. I've actually called several of his fights here in Lights Out of Street Fighting. And again, I got myself bulletproof troops, bullet points for victory for Bryant the Beast Shell. First, range management. He needs to keep this fight at a long distance. He needs to utilize his straight attacks and long limbs in order to keep this fight at the distance. Second, lead with speed, shower with power. He needs to move around and land strikes and then disengage. This is going to allow him to land damage while his opponent chases him around the cage. Lastly, stick and move. He needs to hit him and then continue to be evasive so his opponent's not able to wrap him up. The more distance between Brian Shell and Anthony De Silva, the more damage potentially able to land as De Silva tries to close the distance. Blake's bulletproof troops, keys to victory. Interesting stats about uh, Shell. All his losses, either by guillotine choke or rear naked choke. So yeah. jujitsu isn't his strong part, but he hasn't been knocked out. So he's a solid, solid fighter. And so that's exactly why I say he needs to keep the distance. Almost all of his losses are submission losses. Meaning, if he's able to avoid the submission grappling game and keep distance between himself and his opponent, he has a higher likelihood of coming home successful. And he does, on his amateur career, have a TKO finish, which means he is able to put guys away. And he is a long guy for 155 as well. Really long arms, long limbs, long frame. I'm interested to see the tail of the tape because I'm not sure an exact difference in it, but I believe he has several inches height and more than several inches of reach advantage. The listed height is only a 5'10 for De Silva, six feet for Shell. So good two inches in height difference. And then again, the limbs, lots of times, people like Shell, he's six feet, but maybe his reach is 6'2", 6 6'3". Six right. exactly. You see that often. And look at how long they are, man. His arms are long, his legs are long. I'm a long fighter and I want to see him get in here and fight long. And now, please welcome to the Lights Out cage, Anthony The Matrix De Silva. Entering second out of the red corner, Anthony De Silva, 25 years old. This is his debut, but he had a fight earlier last year in May. Blake, the flight, the fight was flagged, so it didn't count as an official fight. So this, he still shows up with a record of zero and zero. You know, but if you take a look even further back, he has six amateur fights, five and one. One decision coming by loss, a submission win, three decision wins, and a TKO. So this kid is not brand new to fighting, he's just brand new to professional fighting. I watched a lot of footage on this guy as well, and I've got bulletproof bullet points for victory for Anthony the Matrix of Silva. Number one, use strikes to set up his takedowns. By using his hands, it'll raise Brian's hands and he'll be able to drop underneath and get inside and get to Brian's hips. Two, chase takedowns relentlessly. If he is able to get in and get to Brian's hips, he needs to really chase that takedown because if he's able to get Brian down and on top, there's a very high likelihood that he'll be able to utilize a submission to get the win. And three, use ground and pound to open up submissions. Once he gets on top, to use strikes and get Brian to panic and give him an arm. Let's go to the tail of the tape. You see the height advantage. Oh, great entrance right now from Anthony Da Silva. You guys didn't see it, but it was quite, quite cool. He did like a cartwheel flip. Um, 
same weight, nearly identical. A debut for Anthony De Silva. Brian Shaw still looking for his first win. Tyson Johnson. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout will be three five-minute rounds in the lightweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This fighter stands six feet tall. He went at 155 pounds. He represents the training lab, looking for his first victory. Ladies and gentlemen, from San Bernardino, California, please welcome Bryant the Beast Shell. And his opponent fighting under the red corner stands five feet, 10 inches tall. He went in at 156 pounds. He represents the personal training center, making his fight debut out of Riverside, California. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Anthony the Matrix de Silva. Your referee for this professional bout is Mike Beltran. Mike Beltran, what's the reach on Beltran's uh, beard? You know, I'm not sure, but it's almost like he'd use it as a belt or tie that <laughs> thing around. Like, that's like a black belt mustache is right there. For real, though, Pablo. Look at that thing. He's the best and a great guy. Man, if my beard gets like three inches, it's too long for me. That is like a 20-year <laughs> stash. Is that even full? It's a stash, I right? I ask him last time he cut it completely off. He'd probably say never. Let's get this fight underway. Shell, blue corner in the black. De Silva in the red. Strong kicks by De Silva early. Yeah, De oh, Silva yeah. keeping his hands in Bryant's face. I want to see Bryant start throwing some power back and make De Silva. Oh! Strong punch by De Silva. Trying to finish it. A straight left that sent him down. Great Bryant. work. Great work by Shell to stand up. Yeah, like, he looked rock, drop down. You saw him immediately fight to get back up. I'd like to see him fight and turn to his left and get his hips off the cage. Here we go again. He needs to pop out before he's getting taken down here because if he gets put on his back, most all of his losses almost are submission losses. He needs to do everything he can. To oh! This takedown. Quality takedown from De Silva. Anthony De Silva in his debut came in doing a car wheel, then landing punches and now looking to finish it in the first minute. Yeah, that cartwheel tells me how comfortable he is there. Very athletic as well, which does not surprise me. But the comfort level, this is by far the biggest stage he's ever performed on, and he came in like it was just another day at the park. I'm go We're going to be seeing him again in the future, like everything I'm seeing from him. And again, he's only 5'10", but he's got long reach, long arms, long legs, very athletic. Oh, and he's looking for the rear naked choke. choke. Probably doing a fantastic job of utilizing strikes. To oh, wait to he's got it, he's up. got it, he's got it. Anthony Da Silva getting the tap, 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 and he tap, 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 Anthony Da Silva with the win on Lights Out. What a fantastic win, if that counts as his first pro win. What a performance, almost no mileage. Came in, got his game plan, take down, sobbed him up with punches, and got a very naked really choke finish. Oh, fantastic. but he's getting, he's getting up a little bit hobbled. Hopefully he did not injure his foot on that. You know, could have been either for having the feet wrapped in, having the body triangle. Oh, you you get a whole bye bye, man. You look at him. And sometimes he just kind of beats your body a little. I'm not oh, sure. Oh, there you go. He's walking better. He's walking better. Good. Making sure he wasn't hurt. Sometimes he's got to walk it off, rub a little dirt on it. And, and, and it hurts less when you win, and especially when you finish them in the first round. I liked what I saw from Anthony Da Silva. Now 1-0, and oh, undefeated as a pro. Yeah, probably hasn't even been punched in the face yet as a pro. I don't even know if he took any damage there. That's a, that's a flex. Well, just his, his ankle, he's got it still looks like kind of maybe rolled a little bit, but he did not take any single headshots that at all. Yeah, it's always nice when you roll to the after party like you showed up to the fights. He didn't even sweat. He could sit between us, come in for a little interview, though. But let's go to the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after one minute, 22 seconds into round number one, your winner by play of tap out, Anthony the Matrix da Silva. You ready? 
Anthony, were you looking to make a statement on your pro debut? Because it looked like you did. Absolutely. I mean, I've been out of the cage for a couple years now, and so the only goal was to come in here and make a statement. Your decision, even getting to the second round, none of that was acceptable. It was flawless victory or nothing. You see your athleticism when you walked in doing your gymnastics and you were confident. You are settled yeah. in right away. Um, absolutely. I mean, you know, uh, as a fighter, you could just be tough, you could be smart, you could be all those things, but I feel like you have to mix all of them together. And my athleticism is a huge part of why I've been successful, and it'll continue to be the reason I'm the best. So what's next for you, Anthony? Get back in here as soon as possible. Did you hurt yourself? Did you roll your ankle? Uh, I'm good. You're good, always. All right, congratulations. Thank you. Back to you. Love that answer. He said, I'm good. I'm good. What a good win. Anthony De Silva picking up his, his coaches over there. I liked how he entered. You guys didn't see it because we had a graphic, but he jumped in. Great car wheel. Danced around. Confidence. Yelling. Talking. And then he backed it up. You know, he looked fantastic. The thing I think that impressed me the most was the way he just spoke into that microphone. The kid's got personality, and the kid is intelligent. And in my opinion, the highest level of fighting, this is a smart man's strategic game. Kinetic chess, you could say. I'm really looking forward to watching this kid's professional career. Yeah, and part of, of the fight game is also how you sell yourself, how you can talk, how you can market yourself. He has a bright future. Let's roll the highlights again. And Blake, talk us through what we saw. It didn't last long, but it all looked pretty. Yeah, so Brian Shell was hyped. Brian came out. He was throwing bombs. They both stood in front of each other and landed oh. some shots until he put him on his back with that hook. Shell did the right thing by fighting to his feet. And then we saw... Matrix started to drag him back down here. Boom, big takedown. Ended up securing the back mount, locking in the rear naked choke, and taking home another submission win. And his first submission win as a professional here at Lights Out Street Fighting 13. Seeing his body at 155, do you think he can make 145? Because he could be a beast at 145. You know, I mean, potentially, but I would rather see this kid put on a tiny bit of muscle and grow a little more. I think okay. the kid probably has a couple more years of growth in his body before I would tell him to start restricting things and pulling out that much. Blake Bulletproof Troop, I am Pablo Alcina. He's not only an announcer, he also fought inside the Lights Out cage. Quick break, and we'll be back with a lot more. This is Lights Out Extreme Fighting. Blake Bulletproof Troop, your boy, Pablo Alcina. We are live on Fubo. Fubo has over 200 channels of live TV, sports, and news for half the cost of cable. To celebrate Lights Out Extreme Fighting 13, Fubo is offering a special discount for Lights Out fans. 
Visit FuboTV.com slash LXF. That's FuboTV.com slash LXF to start your free trial. Let's go to Tyson Johnson. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the cage, El Perro Loco, Salvatore Bruno. Oh, I like the nickname, El Perro Loco, which means the crazy dog. Salvador Bruno, Salvatore Brune. Bruno. Man, this kid has been fighting since 2015, Pablo. Eight years as an amateur. I'm, excuse me, seven years as an amateur. Went pro in 2022. Nine amateur fights. This is his fourth professional fight. I watched a bunch of footage on this kid yesterday as I was putting together my bulletproof bullet points for victory. And here we go for Bruno El Perro Loco. Number one. Use feints to set up his attacks. He needs to fake his way in. That way he's able to create the openings and then capitalize on the openings created. Number two, throw combinations as opposed to single strikes at a time. He needs to come out and land a few things and follow up. Lastly, engage, then disengage. He needs to get in, throw a combination, and then get out before his opponent's able to drop for a takedown. Salvatore Bruno, Sal Bruno. He's also had the nickname The Bull. Two wins in a row. His last fight, a submission win back in January 23. So it's been a while. He hasn't fought for a year for an official fight. But the thing of note, all three of his losses, including his amateur career, are submission losses. Let's go to a ring announcer, Tyson Thompson. And now, please welcome to the Lights Out Cage, David Trey the Bull Alvarado. Yeah, shout out to the Lights Out production staff. The lights looking nice, the smoke coming in, and the glowing red making it fire, baby. Waiting for the entrance of Trey Alvarado. Oh, he's got confidence, he got smiles, walking in almost like a, like a pop star instead of a fighter. I like it, I'm feeling it. You know, so I heard that this guy is former special ops. Oh. I watched him yesterday at Wayne's, and this dude looks like a killer. And I found out the special ops thing after I thought he was a killer. So if you can imagine what he can do in the military, let's only, we're about to find out what he can do inside of a cage. Here are my keys to victory to Trey Alvarado. Number one, stay on offense. He needs to be the one pushing the action, whether it's on the feet, on the ground, or in the clinch. Two, mix it up. He needs to use all areas of mixed martial arts here, whether it's clinching, takedown, striking, submissions. The more he uses, I think the more success he's going to have in all of it. Lastly, be methodical when on top. If he uses his hands to get inside to get the takedown, once he gets on top, to be methodical about landing strikes, damaging his opponent, and controlling the position until he's able to get a submission. Possibility for a fight of the night between these two guys. You know, I think this is going to be a very competitive fight, and I really think the fight comes down to how well is Salvador Bruno going to be able to keep this fight on the feet? Really comes down to my opinion, his ability to move. Let's go to the numbers. Between Salvatore Italian, not Salvatore, Salvatore. Sal I wish I could parla Italiano, I cannot speak Italian, I understand it. Salvatore Bruno, 27 years old. David Trey Alvarado, 29. The number's pretty similar. You know, the Drop. only thing that stands out to me is the weight is a catch weight, which a lot of the times means somebody missed weight, which I don't know who that is. Let's go to Tyson to hear those official weights. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this next bout will be three five-minute rounds in a catch weight division. And it is the first fighting out of the blue corner. This fighter stands five feet, 10 inches tall. He weighed in at 135 pounds. He represents the shoot. Ladies and gentlemen, with a mixed martial arts record of two wins and one defeat, he hails from Bakersfield, California. Please welcome El Perro Loco, Salvatore Bruno. 
And his opponent fighting out of the red corner stands five feet, 10 inches tall. He went in at 145 pounds. He represents Sikhs Muay Thai with an undefeated record of one win and zero defeats. He hails from Orcutt, California. Please welcome David Trey LeBeau Alvarado. Your referee for this bout will be Hopiel Davis. Bruno taking on Alvarado. Three more fights after this one. The last one did not get out of the first round. Something tells me this one might not either. Yeah, Trey Alvarado has four first round finishes as an amateur. Fights underway, touching gloves, both with black trunks. So I'm gonna go with Alvarado with the Goldilocks. Let's see if blondes have more fun, but he eats that punch early on, saying it was a you poke know, to I the eye. I was surprised how calm Salvador Bruno was. He wasn't even moving around, but once the bell rang, he put his Ooh. hands up, and now this kid is ready Ooh. for action. I like that front kick. Fast, fluid, good and Great aim. for keeping range, which is one of the things I think that is Bruno's keys to victory here. It's keeping the fight at a distance and landing strikes. Catch, wait, fight. Bruno looking a little bit bigger, oh. but we'll see what happens. Alvarado. Second quick. Yeah, both guys are being very patient, looking for their attacks and not rushing in or being reckless. Ooh, strong power. Beautiful job there, mixing it up by Alvarado. That's what I think he needs to do more of. Alvarado was looking for the takedown, could get a wicked elbow that didn't miss by much. And not being able to secure takedown once getting in on a guy like that, not even really getting close, you can be a little demoralizing for it. I believe that Alvarado getting the whoa, oh. getting the takedown will mass whoa, it massively increase his chances of success. I like those jabs by Alvarado. They come in with force behind it. Sometimes people throw the jab just to punch, sometimes to hurt. And he's just stalking his opponent. But there you see Bruno throwing some hands back, trying to get Alvarado to respect his power. I told you it was going to be a good one. Evenly matched. Movement by both. I'd like to see more kicks from Bruno. There we go. Yeah, man, this has been back and forth. Both guys landed some strikes. One takedown attempt that got shut down. This has been very even. Ooh, nice push kick. Another one. You know, Alvarado looks a little longer. I would like to see him play this long range game a little bit. If he keeps pumping that jab out, like you said earlier, he has a great jab and he shoots out like a piston. Nice of the ball coming forward, utilizing the, uh, Alvarado's combo that he's thrown sometimes, using it then on Alvarado. Yeah, I like what I'm seeing from the ball. I'm liking from both. Both kind of picking their spots. You know, one thing that I just noticed is Alvarado has been switching stances. And now that I look at it, I see a Saxon Muay Thai logo on his pants so I'm not surprised to see him switching oh. stances or that he has such great kickbox Bruno delivered a strong kick to the knee of Trey Alvarado see I think the big difference maker now is if we see Alvarado start working in some takedown attempts to at least mix it up and have both thinking of multiple areas of attack and they can open up Alvarado's hands significantly more even if he just threatens the takedown because right now it's a pure kickboxing match I want to see who's the first one to throw an uppercut because they're both leaving that uppercut open when the other one rushes in. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of back and forth head. Ooh, Ooh, man, that, that one connected one. and clean. Ooh. And Alvarado don't realize what a body shot is until you take one. And the ball just, oh. Bruno, for his credit, took the blow and then swung back. Yeah, you know, you can't teach that. You can teach a guy how to punch, but you can't teach them how to reflexively go on offense when they're hurt. You can either do that or you don't. The bull moving forward, realizing he needs to stay on offense as well. The more we see Alvarado move forward, the more damage we see Alvarado doing. It really seems like the guy moving forward is winning the, the current action. But it's a fun fight where half of them move forward half the time. It's like one goes forward, then the other one does. That's why, man, this is going to be a tough fight to judge. This is yeah. a fun one to call, though. I'll tell you what. And a fun one to watch. Usually it's one guy that goes forward, the other guy counters. Here's a little bit of both. Oh, Trey Alvarado ate that first punch. You see what I mean? Every time a guy goes forward, he seems to get the better of the action. 
I think whoever really wants to stay on offense here, but I think if we see too much forward Ooh. motion out of the pool, we're gonna see Alvarado drop for a takedown and put the ball on his back. Which again, I'd like to see Alvarado start threatening more takedowns. Oh, nice by Alvarado. I'd like to see more of that front push kick also. It was working for Alvarado. You are making a great point. It's such a long range attack. Guys are getting into their jab range or round kick range. If they pump, oh, no! Oh! Bruno caught him with one. He waited for the other, and Trey Alvarado took him down. That's the thing about gun slinging in the pocket like that. But the bull is continuing to press forward and not quitting either. Did I tell you this could be fight of the night or what? Oh, a knee me. by Alvarado. Salvatore responding with elbows. Yes, yeah, Salvatore not quitting. I think that Alvarado just won the end of a very close round with those last barrages. And the bull looks a little bit hurt going out of round one, but he did not give up and was throwing back. But he, but he just took a couple of steps and dropped to his knee. A little delayed pain there as we watch Alvarado coming through. Oh, that punch Both by guys Bruno. Both some great shots. We also saw some kicks to the body there. We saw Alvarado throwing another kick to the body. Oh, oh that's the one that wobbled him there. Well, this is towards the very end of the round. And I think the moment that, that secured the round for an already very close round for Alvarado. Yeah, I have Alvarado winning that round. I liked what I saw from Bruno. But he was definitely he was definitely still hurting when the when the round ended. Bruno dropped to an E instead of heading to his corner. So, so I want to see, see how he gets out. There we see Alvarado's corner. Uh, Julio, uh, the head coach at Saxon Muay Thai. Which means he's got the big dog in his corner tonight. Who is a fantastic coach and coach the handball fighters that fight around the world, including in the UFC. I wonder what adjustments we're going to see out of both fighters after the break between round one and two. Alvarado. The red corner with the white blondish hair. Salvatore Bruno out of the blue corner. You know, it really looks like Trey's sitting back. Oh, whoa! I told you that uppercut's open. Either one of them can find space if they go straight up from the middle with a little uppercut. Yeah, several more body kicks now by Alvarado, which when you're landing that left kick to the right side of the body, the liver's on the right side of the body, and that can become a fight-ending kick if you're able to really plant it on the liver. Ooh, strong kick by Bruno. I want to see Bruno moving forward again. I think he's still trying to catch himself, regroup from that end of round one. When he ate those, that left hook, he definitely looked hurt, but I think we saw his best moments in round one when he was moving forward. I think we've seen the best moments out of each guy as he moves forward. And being able to counterattack is a skill that not everybody has, and both of these, I agree with you, Blake. The one who's coming forward is connecting. The counterattack hasn't been there for either one. Almost to the halfway point of the fight, and you can see both guys slowing down a little bit. Oh! He changed it up. I think he wanted to go to, for the body first, went up top. Couldn't quite catch him. Bruno responded there, went to the body. Nice. Yeah, those left kicks to the body are definitely going to start adding up. It's just a matter of time until he plants it on Bruno's liver. Ooh, another one. Yeah, and you saw the, the half smile from, from Bruno, which, you know, they smile right after. It means it hurt. And especially if they come at you and throw three or four big strikes in a row. Wham, wham, wham. Like, you know you hurt him a little bit. Bruno's doing a great job of staying away now and chopping with his leg kicks. This is a pro fight. Three five-minute rounds. We are at the halfway point. Nice strikes by Alvarado. Those jumping punches, not really defending himself when he comes in. Full confidence from Alvarado that Bruno's not going to respond. Yeah, I definitely think Alvarado's getting more and more comfortable, particularly as he's able to chop some of these big strikes, like those leg kicks, to the, or the kicks to the body. 
I, again, I would like to see Alvarado work in some takedowns. All three of Bruno's losses are submission Ooh. losses. Even threatening that position, I think will open up bigger strikes for him on the feet. Combination for Alvarado, really taking control of this fight. Thought he won round one, controlling round two, but Salvatore's still there. Still there. He's, he's definitely not out of the fight. I do see a lot of the momentum, though, in Alvarado's corner. I'd like to see Alvarado come over the top with, like, a big right hand. Oh, I think it could potentially oh, be there. Those are those front kicks. Those push kicks definitely work. And he's not even all the time just chopping it up. Sometimes he's almost jumping his full body into, like, a 300 Spartan kick. <laughs> Oh, question mark kick to the head, lands. Now we see the confidence from Trey Alvarado coming out saying, let's see what else I can do. Right, he seems comfortable to jumping punches, question mark kick. But his hands are dropping a little bit too much, Blake, for me. I mean, there's confidence and then there's, you got to be careful. Yeah, you know, it makes me wonder if it's, if, I mean, because his arms don't look tired if it's a comfort level. I think it's confidence. I think he's just so comfort. Not fearing Bruno. You know, I definitely agree with you because his hands are still flying very quickly and they're up when they need to be a good amount of the time. But he's got to be careful. Salvatore Bruno can still cause damage if he can squeeze one in there. Trey hard to the body. Yeah, another left kick to the body of Bruno. You can see he just switched his stance there because he doesn't want that right side open anymore for that kick. Ooh. Ooh, he's got an elastic band on those legs. I was gonna say, did you see that thing whip around? Yeah. It's faster than my golf swing. Oh, but here comes Bruno. Was yeah. that a slip or did he get hit? It looked like he kind of landed, but it did not necessarily have a great target, but it kind of knocked him off his, off his balance a little bit. I want to see Bruno start coming forward. These were his best moments. But Trey could get the finish here. Bruno looks like he's potentially near the point where if we put enough pressure on him, he could break. Ooh. A jumping knee that didn't miss by much. Another round in my book for the man lifting up his hand. And I'm so jealous of that. The yeah. hair, I don't have much, but it looks see, good. You see Rafael Davis there jumping in at the very end of the round. Here's some highlights from round two. And I believe this is going to be a lot of Trey Alvarado, like that right there. Wham! With the left kick to the right side of the body of Salvatore Bruno has been one of the most successful attacks of the of this uh, match. And the way the drastic amount of momentum change that we saw there, I'm only going to expect it to get bigger now that we are seeing Julio. Back in Trey Alvarado's here. Salvatore Bruno trains at the shoot. The shoot. Let's see what he's got. This catch weight fight. Round three, final one. Bruno in the blue corner. Alvarado with the white hair in the red corner. Help out my man Salvatore Bruno. What can he do to steal this fight? You know, I think he needs to keep moving forward. Those have been his best moments in the first round. Didn't do a whole lot of moving forward in the second round, and I felt like it was a lot of the Trey Alvarado show in the second round. What he needs to do is move forward and be on offense. The more time that Trey Alvarado spends on offense, the more time it's his fight. Alvarado with that bobbing, weaving one side to the other. Oh, oh and see, got a little bit too pretty. See, he was switching forward. stands, and he nearly got clocked. Here comes Bruno now. Bruno needs to keep pushing forward here. I think now's the time. Push in. Your forward pressure is when you're landing the best things. You have him a little bit hurt. Get in there and start putting your hands in his face. Oh, good round so far. Good first minute for Bruno. Corner Alvarado saying, hey, hey, relax. Yeah, I want to see Bruno put the pressure on. Now's Bruno's time. You caught him a little bit. Yes, continue Here he comes. this. Stay on it. Don't, don't stop that forward progression, especially if you hit him a little bit. And look Here. at the smile on Bruno's face growing like, hey, I'm here, man. I'm here. And he's growing, Blake. What a fight we have. And there's still 3.30 to go in this one. 
You see the best moments now of the third round as well when Bruno is moving forward. He needs to stop backing up and throw. Plant your feet, hit this guy, and then move forward towards him and keep hitting him. And hopefully the corner told him, look, you lost round one, you lost round two. Go for broke. He still has time, three minutes to go. Now for Trey Alvarado, you've dominated this fight. You're winning by the judges, but you started dropping your hand and you started eating shots. And Alvarado saying, let me respond and let me finish this off the right way. Oh! Almost looked like Trey Alvarado got a little frustrated there. You could see a little like frustration on his face after eating that jab. Man, Bruno's not out of this fight. He still has 250 to potentially put his opponent away, and he's wobbled him already once this round. Alvarado keeps dropping those hands. His hands are totally down now. Yeah, I want to see forward pressure again out of Bruno. And once he comes in, continuing the forward pressure. Oh! Look at the right hand of Alvarado. Down by his side. But unfortunately, Bruno has not thrown a left hook all fight long, so I think that's why. Oh, you know, I think a left hook. Oh, oh there's the takedown. Wow. And Trey Alvarado says, oh, I was just playing possum for you. You were saying, Blake. You know, I would like to see him do more takedowns. All three of Bruno's losses thus far have been by submission. I'd like to see him threaten that takedown a lot more. You see some blood now coming out of the... Oh, oh strong oh, to the body. A left that connects. A left hook that finally Bruno throws. Did not miss by much. I want to see that again. He's leaving his right hand down. Keep throwing the left hook. Ooh, he keeps doing it. He's not, if he connects one, Blake, this could change in one punch. 100, whoa, 100%. He's moving forward when he throws those. So if he wants to land that, he needs to start moving forward to try and get that offense out there. Final 90 seconds, fun fight. Uppercut the connects. Trey Alvarado's looking like his comfortable self from round two again. Final minute and 15 seconds for Salvatore Bruno. Salvatore Bruno needs to go for broke here. I know he's hurt and he's tired, but if he needs, he needs to start swinging for the fences if he doesn't want to lose this fight. And Alvarado, you're 60 seconds away from your arm being raised if you don't get caught. Strong punches by Alvarado and a good kick. And now to the body. Nice finish to the fight for Trey Alvarado. Man, you never know, though, the way that oh. these guys are hitting each other. Oh, he's wobbled, Pablo. A surprise Trey Alvarado didn't jump on him there. Or right here. He looks like he just needs a little bit more convincing. Oh. oh! Bruno was maybe playing possum for that one last swing. I don't know, I just think he might need a little more, whoa, a little oh. more convincing, but he's got the heart of a lion. I would not mind seeing these two run it back again in the future. What a fun fight. I liked what I saw from Trey Alvarado. His defense, not that great, but hey, if you don't get punched, I'm not gonna complain either. You know, the best defense, they say, is a strong offense. Exactly. And Trey Alvarado has been implementing great offense, and when he is on offense, it's pretty much been his fight. And that's the end of the fight. It ends in a hug. I like seeing this. I'm going to applaud Salvatore Bruno and Trey Alvarado. Those were fun 15 minutes. Yeah, so I always tell people, after a fight, you either have a ton of respect for somebody or none. And after a fight like this, you've got to have a ton of respect for your opponent. Quick break, and we'll be back with more. You're watching Lights Out Extreme fighting oh what a great backflip from trey alvarado you thought he was tired he just did a full backflip just now man lights out extreme fighting he's blake bulletproof troop and national wrestling alliance superstar wrestler i am pablo alcina we'll be back in a few
Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's give a big round of applause to both of these gladiators. And now, ladies and gentlemen, after three exciting rounds, all three judges score the bout 30-27 for your winner. Out of the red corner, Trey the Ball David, it started out with a kickboxing fight. Is that where you felt most comfortable? Uh, no, I'm a, I'm a wrestler. The game plan was always to do some strikes. Kicking, take him down, uh, ground and pound, make him tired. Maybe resort yeah, back there. to stand up. We've been working on it a lot. But he had good takedown defense and stopped me from it, so we had to resort to standing up with him. And it played out well, but uh, the game plan was definitely not that. So uh, we got the win. You were hurting with those leg kicks with the body and the head. When did you know that was really going to work for you? That was the game plan as far as standing goes. So that, I get that was, that was part of it. But originally, we were supposed to take him down eventually. So, so what's next for you? Because everyone's excited to see this, see a rematch even. Uh, I'm, I'm just trying to get back in there. Hopefully, within the next eight weeks, I feel pretty good right now. I don't feel like I took any too much damage. I don't think I have any cuts as far as I know. So uh, hopefully, I get back in here in eight weeks is the plan. So, Congratulations. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Back to you. Thank you, Bonnie. Trey Alvarado, I guess. Blonde fighters also have more fun. He died at blonde, looked good, fun fight, big win. Did you like what you saw from Trey Alvarado? You know, I would have loved to have seen him finish it, but the most important thing, he came out here and had an exciting fight. Both these guys laid it all on the line and earned each other's respect. more fights this is lights out extreme fighting and i have to say it again sean merriman is building a monster
de José Matus. Entering first, Jose Matus. Jose Matus, a veteran of eight professional fights, and he's never left round one. To watch this guy for a handful of times, your lights on the street fighting, and bulletproof troops got some bullet points for victory for Jose Matus. Give them to me, boy. Number point. one, hold the center of the cage. Wait for his opponent to come to him instead of moving towards his opponent. This is going to allow him to utilize his leg and his hands while his opponent's going for a takedown. Number two, don't stand in front of your opponent. Hold the middle when he comes at you, cut an angle, and then counter strike from there. And third, heavy handed when he does the counter strike. He needs to use the power he has in his hands to knock his opponent out when he gets the chance. Matus, born in Mexico, so you know I have to do a shout out a todos los mexicanos viéndonos. I have lots of love from Mexico. My wife is from Mexico. I lived in Mexico. Viva Mexico! Shout out to everybody from Mexico that's watching us, and of course from the United States, from Argentina, from Venezuela, from Peru, from Europe, from all around the world that's tuning in on Fubo to watch Lights Out Extreme Fighting 13. And now, please welcome to the Lights Out Cage, Syed Hassan. Syed Hassan, veteran of 14 fights, 12 of those being pro. And just like Jose Matus never left round one, in 14 fights, Saeed Al Hassan has never left round two, which means I'm expecting a finish here in Jose Matus versus Saeed Al Hassan. So you're saying one fighter never left round one, the other one never left round two. Something tell me the judges might not need to put in a decision in this one. But what I do know is you're gonna have a good time watching this fight. Matus. So Ul Hassan's bullet points for victory. Number one, draw his opponent in. Instead of moving towards Matus, wait for Matus to come towards him before engaging. This will make his takedown much easier and much safer. Number two, use his hands to set up a takedown. Throw his hands, get Matus to raise his, change levels, then get in for the takedown. And now three, smother his opponent when on top. Once he gets on top, cook Matus with pressure, forearm chokes, and so forth until he either gives up an arm or does something silly like turn his back and get caught in a rear naked choke. Saad Al Hassan, his last fight, March 23, March of 2023, fighting. And here we see the teletape, Matus, 25, five years younger than Al Hassan. Same identical weight, two inches taller for Saad. Three more wins for Saad, who was born in Palmdale, California. Let's go to Tyson Johnson. Ladies and gentlemen, this next bout is three five minute rounds in the welterweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This fighter stands five feet, 10 inches tall. He weighed in at 170 pounds. He represents Gray Wolf MMA with an MMA record of two wins and five defeats. He hails from the country of Mexico. Please welcome Jose Matuz. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner stands six feet tall. He weighed in at 170 pounds. He represents the SoCal Fight Factory with an MMA record of five wins and seven defeats. He hails from Palmdale, California. Please welcome Syed Hassan. Your referee for this bout is Milan Ayers. Two fights to go after this one. Matus taking on Ul Hassan. Yeah, isn't it crazy for these guys having about 20 fights combined, never leaving the first or second round? I don't think this one leaves the first round. I think someone's getting knocked out or somebody's getting tapped off. This is traditional striker versus grappler. So I think 
So pump up the volume because this fight's underway. Al Hassan with the pink trunks with black out of the red corner. Matus in black with the Mexican flag on his leg. You were saying, Blake? Yeah, so I think Matus doing the right thing by holding his ground here. He needs to pump his jab up, but don't move forward like that. Stay right here in the middle. Make Hassan come to him, land some strikes, and if he overrushes in, cut an angle, and then heavy-handed counters. Ol Hassan's doing the right thing by being patient here because we know he's going to go for that takedown. Wasn't oh. patient at all. Picked him up. Up, up, and down. Big boy body slam. Yeah, slammed him down hard. And not only that, but if you look, you can see the guys right there on the other side of the cage are Ol Hassan's coaches, which is a very advantageous place to be on the ground on top of your opponent. What I like about Saad Al Hassan, he can beat you different ways. He has wins via knockout, arm bar, guillotine, and rear naked choke as well. Now going for the good old fashioned pounding. Yeah, he has fantastic grappling though. I'm not surprised to see him get the takedown immediately once he was able to wrap up uh, Matus, which is why it was so important for Matus to move around. I don't think we see Matus get off of his back here. And he's got all the time in the world, three minutes and 45 seconds in just the first round. But he's looking for that rear naked choke. First, he's going to soften him up a little bit. Save Jose Matus, Blake. Can he do anything? You know, he's a tough guy, but we saw Tommy Aaron finish him in this exact position. Oh, it's all just going to pound on his head, though, until Milan Air steps in. And it's over. Saad. Ooh, Hassan. First round. TKO. Yeah, beautiful performance, flawless by Saeed Ol Hassan, coming in, getting the takedown, being patient about it, but once he wanted it, grabbed it, slammed Matus almost through the mat, and then got some fantastic ground about to get a finish. Beautiful performance by Saeed Ol Hassan. And also, if you want to know the lottery winning numbers, Blake and I will tell you, because we guaranteed this was not going to a decision, I was hoping for round two, but uh, Al Hassan just too good. That great takedown was one of the best takedowns we've had all. Definitely takedown of the year because it's our first event of this year, but I loved it. He yeah. picked him up and he tore him down. Yeah, he planted Matus in the back. So, you know, Hassan gets to six and seven now, and he said he doesn't feel like his record is great because he had fight hunger. He just wanted to get in, opportunities popped up, which I respect, because as a fighter, sometimes you just want to fight people. So, but he, now that I've seen him in person to perform, I am impressed with this kid, and he is much better than his record says. Fantastic performance and debut for Saeed Hassan here at Lights Out of Street Fighting 13. You mentioned Tommy Aaron, you know him well. Tommy Aaron has the Lights Out belt. How about a Tommy Aaron Al Hassan in the Ladies future? But let's go to Tyson one Johnson. 33 seconds into round number one. Your winner by play of TKO, Sayed Al Hassan. <laughs> Flawless victory for Saad. Congratulations. So we know none of your fights have gone longer than a two rounds. So did you know you're going to end it easy? Yeah, well, you never plan to finish in the first round, right? Um, I, the last time we were supposed to fight, I had surgery scheduled right after that fight. That's supposed to really help my cardio, right? I had a deviated septum. I fought my whole career with a deviated septum. Deviated both ways. So I kind of want to test my cardio this time, but... I know he's dangerous. I know he has a lot of punching power. He has a lot of fast finishes, so I didn't want to risk it. Well, your stamina is there. You didn't even break a sweat. But <laughs> you grappling. We know that taking it to the ground is you know, what you're comfortable with. Did you know after that slam that you had control? Yeah, I, uh, we've talked about it. My coach talked about it. Take him down, you know, kind of relax, secure the position first. Um, I kind of sort of wanted to throw him. I just got my brown belt in judo the other day, earlier this week. Congratulations. I wanted to test it out, but there's something there. So now you got another win on your record. Where do you go from here? Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm probably going to go buy a new dishwasher, man. My, my dishwasher at the house broke. I've been washing my dishes by hand. It sucks. <laughs> first thing I'm going to do. Let's go home and buy a dishwasher. Perfect. No more washing dishes. All right. Congratulations. Thank you. Pablo, Blake. <laughs> Thank you, Bonnie. And by the way, is there a dishwashing company that wants to sponsor my man's next fight? Because that was a nice plug. He needs a new dishwasher, but he definitely cleaned the dishes inside that cage. 
perfect. Little soap, a little rinse, the fight was over, talk it through it, Blake. Yeah, game plan to a T, get in there, wrap him up, smother him from the top until you're able to find the submission win. Exactly how I would have told him to play it, and he executed the game plan to a T. Fantastic performance by Saeed Al Hassan. Let's look at the replay again. We could almost show you the entire fight because it did not take long, Blake. Matus, he's a solid fighter, he's a game fighter, but lots of times if you fall into a zone that you're not comfortable, it's all she wrote and bang, there we see the slam. Man, planted Matus. They did a great job of getting on top, securing a very dominant position, and then landing ground and bound strikes from the top. We still have two more fights to go, and the next one is gonna be a thrilling fight between Jake Woodley Jake Woodley, he's gonna fight Superman. Angel Ramirez, that's his nickname, Superman. So we have a Texan who comes in looking like a cowboy taking on Superman Ramirez. I'm really looking forward to this fight because I love what I saw from Jake. Yeah, me too. This should be a banger. We have a young prospect and an experienced guy getting inside the cage and banging it out in our co-main event. Two more fights to go, quick break, and we'll be back with more. You are watching Lights Out Extreme Fighting 13. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Lights Out Cage, Angel Ramirez. Entering first, they call him Superman, Angel Ramirez. Yeah, veteran of eight fights, including two professional fights. Started fighting in 2015 and then turned pro in 2015. Took seven fights in 2015. This dude has been fighting for a long time, and he is on a one-fight win streak. Here's bulletproof troops, bullet points for victory for Ainho, Superman Hernandez. Number one, utilize quick, long-range strikes. He needs to work his jab out there and keep distance. Then engage and disengage, because he wants to avoid the great wrestling of Jake Woodley. Lastly, throw strikes with bad intentions. If he's not throwing out quick long range attacks, then he's throwing something big trying to knock out Jake Woodley. Ramirez, his last fight, a win in round one back in August 2023. 
So he comes off a win, 32 years old, part of Game Bread MMA. This fight, 185 pounds. Blake, I don't think this one goes to a decision, my man. You know, I don't think so either. And I think that this Jake Woodley character is going to come out here and display some more fantastic wrestling. The thing is, he's untested. We don't know what happens when another middleweight touches him on the chin. This is a big problem for Angel Ramirez to solve. And now, please welcome to the Lights Out Cage, Jake Woodley. Jake Woodley coming in. More serious than last time. T-shirt, serious look on him. Last fight, he fought um, Daniel McWilliams. Yeah, and it was on lights out. And McWilliams had, you know, many losses. But Woodley guaranteed, I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna beat him and I'm gonna finish it quick. And he did. I'm very interested to see how uh, this fight, much better opponent, much different fight for Jake Woodley. But I wanna know Blake, bulletproof troops, keys to victory. So for Jake Woodley, the collegiate wrestler, he needs to have patient pressure where he's constantly moving forward, but not too much that he's rushing in. Number two, cut off the cage. Angel Ramirez is going to be moving around and trying to evade the pressure of Jake Woodley. Jake needs to cut off the cage by not chasing him, but instead sidestepping until he's able to herd his opponent into the cage. Once he gets there, he needs to get the takedown. Pressure, cut off the cage, get the takedown, and then do what he does best on top, land big strikes, and look to try and open submissions with those strikes. We look at the numbers. One inch taller for Ramirez, but a perfect record for Woodley. Ramirez, one win and one loss. This kid has a bright, bright future. Jake Woodley, 24 years old, his second time inside the lights out cage. Let's see if he puts on another great show to Tyson. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the co-main event of the evening. This bout will be three five-minute rounds in the middleweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This fighter stands six feet, one inch tall. He weighed in at 185 pounds. He represents Game Red MMA with an MMA record of one win and one defeat. He hails from El Cajon, California. Please welcome Asia Ramirez. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner stands six feet tall. He weighed in at 186 pounds. He represents Team OCRTC with an undefeated record of two wins and zero defeats. He hails from the great state of Texas. Please welcome Jake Woodley. Your referee for this bout will be Javier Davis. Time for the Cole main event. It's gonna be a good one. May not last long, so do not blink. Woodley, Ramirez, lights out, extreme fighting, 13. You know, one thing worth noting is now I see Tyler Wombles in Jake Woodley's corner who runs Classic Fight Team, who is a fantastic kickboxing coach. It makes me wonder how much evolution we're going to see in the hands and feet of Jake Woodley. Fight underway, Woodley out of the red. First one swinging though was Ramirez. They call him Superman. You know, he's trying to put his hands in, whoa! Put his hands in Woodley's mouth, because like I said, Woodley is untested. He performs great, but we've only seen offense out of him. What happens when somebody hits him? And Angel Ramirez is trying to be that guy to find out. Look at Woodley looking at those hips, trying to read when to shoot, when to look for the takedown. Ramirez trying to use his boxing. Yeah, Ramirez is doing a great job of utilizing feints, and you can see now that Woodley's been hit a few times. Oh! Ho, 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 ho. Woodley with the takedown. Ramirez nearly timed the knee perfectly, but now Woodley has the back, and Woodley is upset, and Woodley is angry, and Woodley, Blake, looking to finish it early. Bro, yeah, did you see the look on his face when he popped up from that takedown? He looked furious. And he's doing the right thing here. He's got great pressure. He's got his opponent down. Oh, he's reaching in the cage here. 
But this is exactly where he needs to be on the guy. And I think pounding on him from this position. You, and we saw there, he does not like to get hit. Which I don't blame him, getting hit sucks. But Ramirez nearly timed that knee. Could have been a problem for Woodley, but we saw his superior wrestling. So the way Woodley charged in really aggressively, it makes me wonder how much he's spending in the gas tank right now. Oh, he's, but he's 24 and he's got all the gas tank possible. Don't you think? I like, don't know, he probably has a relatively rough weight cut. He's a big dude for middleweight. Good point. And he's really riding his opponent now. Now he's getting some time to rest, but every time Angel Ramirez wants to get up, he's got to lift all probably 210 pounds of Jake Woodley, because I bet you Jake's over 200 pounds now today. We did at 185 yesterday. And Ramirez, a big boy, too. Ramirez doing a good job here of almost putting it in a position where it's a stalemate. And although Jake Woodley is on his back, he's not in a position to really uh, mount much offense. Being very patient, very smart Andrew Ramirez. It wouldn't surprise me to see him bring his right foot up next and try and get back to his feet. We know what Jake wants to do. He wants to throw you on the ground, smother you, use that wrestling, use that Texas size on top of you and that force and just try to grind you down. That's what he's doing here. Yeah, he's landed some big strikes, getting a wrist control there, controlling the far side arm, and then banging on the head with the near side one that is now covered. What can Angel do to, to stand up here to hear chants of Angel, Angel? I would like to see him start wall walking up just like this. Now he needs to create a scramble. He needs to fight up, fight up, fight up, fight up, just like that. Now create some space, disengage, utilize his underhooks to turn, get off the cage ideally, because he's almost free. He's back on his feet, he's almost there. His family chanting, jumping, Angel, Angel got him to his feet. But Jake Woodley said, I ain't your family, fam. And he threw him back down and got the back again. 100%, he heard those chants from the crowd. That's, I think, part of what helped him find the strength there to fight to his feet. I want to see him do it again. If he turns his backs completely against the cage, he can use the pressure of the cage to start walking his back up the cage. If you're Jake, would you throw some knees right there? I see an opening for a knee to the ribs. I would, would probably you... disengage, strike, and then re-engage. And the way that he just disengaged, re-engaged, just like that, I'd pull him down, I'd get him so he's kind of flat, I'd hit him, I'd pop up, I'd hit him a few times, and I'd drag him back down. Woodley listening and running this first round perfectly, not receiving any damage, winning on points like to see this fight get back on their feet. And I did get one of my questions answered. How does he act when he gets hit in the face? He gets a little angry and, it, and he puts out more offense. But I wonder what happens if he gets hit really hard in the face. You don't know yet. He's doing a fantastic job of preventing that from happening, though. But what it did show is he wanted to turn it into a wrestling fight as soon as he got hit in the face. There's different fighters. Sometimes they get hit in the face. They want to turn it into a brawl. Here we see Jake Woodley. Okay, you punch me, wrestling. Right, and it almost becomes a drilled-in instinctive reaction. 100% agree with you. And I think that's something that could come into play later on in the fight. If this gets back to 30 seconds, the round's over. In round two, if he starts landing some shots, we know where Jake's going. And if you become relatively predictable, it's easier to get ahead of a guy. Here we go again. He's got the back, but he's only got 15 seconds. Beautiful control here by Jake Woodley. He has been dominant position on Angel's back the whole time. Maybe not landing much damage, but absolute top control by Jake Woodley. Five minutes dominated by Woodley, except for that first strike early by Ramirez. It was all Woodley. But look, he's got it all, man. He's got the look, he's got the size. He has the punching power. We haven't seen it. Haven't seen many kicks from him, but wrestling, top of his game. You know, I am interested to see how much energy he spent there. Because like I said, he probably had at least 20 pounds that he cut. Maybe more than that. He is a solid dude, and he's breathing kind of heavy. They both, they both are. But he spent a lot of energy there trying to control the position when Angel Ramirez was just kind of relaxing a handful of times when he wasn't trying to get to his feet. Non-stop, Jake Woodley had to have pressure or like exerting force. You're a fighter, Blake, so I gotta ask you this question. Would you do any changes to weight weigh-ins and weight cuts? Would you would you establish a you have to weigh yourself the day of the fight limits on how much you can put on 
So I mean, I think that weight cutting puts handcuffs in the body's ability to perform, and it's only an advantage because people do it. Everyone just fought at their natural. Like, why do the weight cut? Why dehydrate your brain before getting into a fight for your life, you know? I'm not a fan of weight cutting. And I think it put handcuffs on my body's ability to perform. And I know that I didn't perform as well. If this is an entertainment industry, let's have entertaining fights by having fighters at 100% when they get in there. Round two, Woodley. And they're fighting out of the red. Ramirez with you the can, blue. You can see Woodley's a little bit hesitant to get into punch range. Makes me wonder if he's gonna dive from a distance for a shot, which we already saw Angel Ramirez try and throw and catch him with that knee. The further away Woodley is, the more dangerous it is for him to take a shot. Woodley kind of like a step over Euro step in a basketball move when he comes in for those punches. I haven't seen that often in MMA. Yeah, you saw him there faint for a takedown, which I think he should be doing more of. I think that's going to open his hands and open everything else up. Ramirez eats another right. Nice jab by Woodley. That actually was a really good jab right down the pipe. Again, you can see how hesitant Woodley is to get into the pocket. He does not like to get hit, and you can see that Angel Ramirez is throwing with some decent power. Yeah, and I don't think Angel is afraid of Jake's power. He's afraid of the takedown, not well, the, the punching. I 100% agree. I think it was up to Ramirez. He'd be exchanging with Jake right now. I think he got the better of the exchange early on, and you can tell that Jake doesn't like to be hit. Not that that's a, I don't like to get hit either, but... I think it's impacting his performance here because now he's not willing to get inside of that pocket. And also back to your point in round one, how much energy did he waste in that takedown? Because Ramirez is a big man also. He's got to be weighing in close to 200 as well, easily here. And Woodley seems a little, a little more timid than we're used to seeing. Yeah, I 100% agree. I, don't actually, I would do more of these leg, leg attacks like we just saw Andrew Ramirez do. Chopping that leg from a distance because just beyond punch range is kick range, particularly for that low calf kick. I'd be starting to throw a bunch of those if I was Angel Ramirez. What a good round for Angel Ramirez. He's held his own here. Woodley now responding. The two best punches by Woodley so far this round. Two Whoa. jabs. But Ramirez responding with a nice one and two. I actually think we're going to see a little more confidence after Woodley there because he got tagged and was right back in the game. And I think he might be like, all right, not too bad. Ooh. See, now moving forward. I think him getting hit in that last exchange actually helped his confidence a little bit. Not in that one. Now there's a cut on the left eye of Ramirez. See, those jabs are working. Woodley, use them more. Yeah, he has a surprisingly good jab for a guy that I would not, uh, that I would have said was a grappler. Agreed. Only seen three of, oh, whoa. Over the top elbow. That was a strange shot from Woodley. I would like to have seen him drop for a takedown off that elbow. Bam, elbow hits up top. You know the hands are high change levels. You already have all that forward momentum. Man, two minutes left here in the second round. Ooh, and it looks like Ramirez gaining a little bit more cardio. And luckily the cut is not getting into his eyes, going right down the side of the nose. Good break there. Yeah, I definitely feel like the momentum is starting to sway in the corner of Angel Ramirez. Oh, Woodley responding. Nice. Woodley needs to do more of that. I think he should have chased that takedown a little bit more relentlessly. For his just his third pro fight, a great matchup for Woodley here to see what he has. I love what Ramirez is bringing for this fight. Whoa. Oh, the... the the sweat landed on my tabletop right here. They're swinging with fury. Got some blood on my notes. I was going to say, you know, I'm never too worried about the sweat, but blood does not come out of his suit easily. Yeah, Probably I'm... not a problem with the majority of society. Whoa! Oh! Over the top, missed barely by Woodley. Oh. Looking for that guillotine for a second. And they're back on their feet. Oh, Woodley looking to the side, checking the time, checking with his corner. There's still a minute to go, Jake. Yeah, a minute can be a very long time when your gas tank is starting to run low and you're ready for a few-minute break. 
And especially when Superman keeps coming forward at you, there's that jab again. Jake is really, look at that, he's busting him open with the jab and the right. Throw the jab more. I agree 100%. He could just start picking and moving. And then when Angel comes forward, that's when you drop for a takedown. Don't shoot him a crazy distance. Make him come through your long range attacks. Oh, co continue the pressure there. Oh, and then another left that connects. And the two cuts over the left eye, both with straight jabs from Woodley. Man, Woodley may have just taken this second round in the last minute. The amount of mileage we're seeing on Angel and Whoa! Oh! Wicked! That had some bad intentions, but the cuts on Ramirez's face really getting worse by the second, and that one is big, and that one's gonna be affecting his eyesight. Yeah, the amount of mileage that we saw getting put on Andrew Ramirez's fight at the end of the second round, I'm actually really surprised about it. Let's take a look at some of the replays here. Early on, not a whole, oh, actually, we already did later on. Look at all those. You can see the cut on the left eyebrow. It's a big gash, but it's not directly above the eye where the blood will run down around the face. Woodley definitely started turning around. It looked like he found a little bit more confidence in his hands. There's that left hook that seemed to almost wobble Superman. But just like a superhero, he took it on the chin and got right back to the action. Final three minutes and final five minutes. This is the third round, and what a good one we have here because Ramirez, yes, a sangre latina. You know, he's not gonna stop, he's gonna keep coming forward. Jake Woodley, the undefeated youngster, he wants another knockout win. Let's see what we have. This is Lights Out Extreme Fighting. Both guys looking very composed here going into the third round. Woodley comes out and immediately starts pumping that jab out. Oh! Ramirez still going forward. Woodley. I have it 2-0 Woodley, but not by much. They could have it 1-1, Blake. I agree 100% with you. I would probably give it to Woodley just because the last 30 oh. seconds he did a good amount of damage. Any, any danger here for Woodley? Not yet. Um, but the thing is, he's wrestled for so long where it didn't, he didn't need to be worried about getting submitted. So it's him taking a shot, you've just dripped in it where your face is down. You're not, trying, you're not worried about being choked or something. So your, your takedowns are going to potentially expose you a little bit. Four minutes to go. Like the future that I see from Jake. But there's some holes in his game that he needs to work on as well. You know, but for a guy who has two fights, no amateur fights, two professional fights. Oh, no amateur fights? No amateur oh. fights, just co college wrestler. So he has had hundreds of matches of collegiate wrestling. So he's in a very experienced competitive athlete within combat sports. The third actual MMA fight against a guy who has eight fights. Interesting, in this round, he has not been looking for the takedown. He stayed boxing, his mouth opening, breathing heavy. And Ramirez still punching some heavy blows. Where's the jab, Jake? It was working. There, there it is. There it is. You called that one, Pablo. Uh, all day, all day, Jake, with that jab. They say a good right hand will take you around the block, but a good jab will take you around the world. Good jab has busted Ramirez's eyes, but Ramirez is still standing strong. Three minutes to go in this one. Look at the blood coming from Ramirez's eye now. Man, but like Terminator, this dude just coming forward. He doesn't care. Ooh. He doesn't even try and wipe it. He just wants to put his hands in Jake Woodley's face. And again, most people see the, that blood and they expect a, a, an overhand right. No, those are straight jabs that have busted the face open constantly. Great work by Woodley. And Ramirez just, running out of time. Not just that, but Woodley will take a few shots on the chin and just walk through him. I think that we need to see Angel get his back off the cage. Oh, he might be. Oh, there we see the strength of Woodley. Round three with two minutes to go. Still able to do that. Impressive. This is a make or break moment. Halfway through the third round, if Angel Ramirez gets stuck and accepts bottom position, this could be the end of the fight for him. He needs to do everything in his power to get back to his feet. Because in my opinion, best case scenario, it's tied 1-1. Oh, there we go. And that's where, that's the heart right there. 
fighting out of that position and doing what you got to do to get there. And what we what we said in round one, if Woodley starts getting hit, he instantly looks for to turn it into a wrestling oh, match. We, we saw it again. Adrian Ramirez just slid his right arm under the armpit uh -oh. and he's going for an anaconda choke here. It's very hard to finish. I didn't think he would get that. Well, also the, the neck on Jake Woodley makes it a bit tough. You know, but it definitely is going to make Woodley potentially a little more hesitant now to shoot in. Twice now in this round, he's not caught in that front headlock tight position. Now Woodley has to be careful that he didn't win round two. 100%, this could be a split decision, assuming that this keeps going in this manner. Oh! And who it would go to, I'm not sure, because both guys are having some fan. The only thing we know is Woodley took round one. Two and three have been very close. And again, if it wasn't for the blood, I would have given round two to okay. Ramirez. But the blood was so bad, it could have swayed the judges. 100% agree. The strikes didn't look crazy dramatic, like highlight oh. real finish. But the face at the end looked like damage had been done. 60 seconds to go. What a fight. We've seen it all today. Quick knockout, submissions, and now a thriller. 50 seconds to go. I think Andrew Ramirez is doing the right thing by pressuring him. I think that Woodley's very tired and ready for this fight to be over. We saw him checking the clock at the end of round one. He is probably exhausted by now, but he's a competitive athlete, so he hasn't quit fighting. But now's the time for Angel to really put the pressure on and start hitting the gas. Great takedown, and now trying to get the back is Jake Woodley. And now I think here he can sit here for the final 25 seconds of this fight. Absolutely, but that doesn't mean I would stay there if I were Angel Ramirez. It's close enough that you don't want to spend the last 25 seconds of the match on your... There we go. There Love to see that right there. Come on, Ramirez. Flying knee. Man, and the other thing, Ramirez is looking for finishes. He's trying to knock his opponent out. And Five I think seconds. that's a big thing the judges look Four for. Four seconds. Three seconds, hard punches to the body, but the fight's going to finish. What a thriller. Wow, that was an impressive co-main event performance by Jake Ranchance Woodley and Angel Superman Ramirez. I don't know who the winner is inside the cage, but everybody in the audience are the winners outside of the cage. What a fantastic co-main event here at Lights Out, Lights Out Street Fighting 13. Lots of times you want to see a finish. Sometimes neither fighter deserves to get finished. And I, I would have not want, wanted to see Superman Ramirez go out at the end on a bat or Jake Woodley lose because he gets caught. This was a thrilling fight, 15 minutes. Go to a decision. Both men gave their all. Quick break and we'll be back with more. You're watching. Lights out, Extreme Fighting 13, live on Fubo.
seguridad de... Flip a coin with Dolph Lundgren. Yes, please. I am watching January 17th is the premiere. And Blake, you owe me dinner because you got the... I called tails, you called head, so you're paying. How is this really a game <laughs> show? That's what you have to watch. You have to watch Fubo, Flip a coin, and it's Dolph Lundgren. Rocky IV, Ivan Drago. What was your favorite Rocky movie? Ooh, I'm probably going to say three with Drago was a good one. I love all the Rocky movies. Let's go over to our official decision with our cage announcer, Tyson Johnson. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a big round of applause for both of these gladiators. Now, ladies and gentlemen, after three exciting rounds, all three judges score the bout 30-27 for your winner by unanimous decision out of the red corner, Jake Woodley. Woodley remains perfect. Bonnie Jill with the victory. Jake, you're 3-0, just three under your belt, no amateur fights. How happy are you with the success you've had here on the Lights Out platform? I'm very happy with uh, my success, pleased with my performance tonight. Couldn't do it without my team, Orange County Regional Training Center, classic fight team. Got some great sponsors, Ranch Hands, Doc Hines, or uh, OC Fight Doc, Queen of Quads. Uh, yeah, I think that's it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed in the last fight you really worked on your boxing. How much did you do that from the last fight? I did a lot of stand-up with Tyler Wombles, and, you know, I, I didn't know exactly what the game plan was going in here, but I felt really good on my feet. It's like, man, I'm winning without even taking them down, so I just kind of rolled with it. Felt really good. Your jab was incredible. Was that part of the plan? Yeah, definitely. I got long arms. Just want to keep that jab out there, occupy the space. You know, just didn't let him get too close. Now, early we saw that. I was looking at you. were watching the hips when you could take him down. Was that the plan to take him out early to the ground? Uh, I was just seeing whatever was there. My back was up against the cage. He threw that knee, used that to get the takedown, and I think I was on top that whole round, and then just worked my hands after that for some reason. I don't know. It was just there. D1 wrestler, the transition has been so easy for you. Did you expect this much success this early? Definitely expected a lot of success, yeah, but... I mean, it looks smooth in the cage, but I definitely take whoopings in practice every once in a while, so it's not that smooth, but I'm gonna, you know, rocky road to the top. Congratulations, a good Thank one. You. Thank you so much. We'll see you back here. Yes. Pablo, Blake. Thank you, Bonnie. Well done, Jake Woodley. I loved what he said there. It looks easy in the cage, but I take some whoopings in practice. People don't see the amount of work these fighters, they have to pay their, their corner, they have to pay their cutmen, they have to pay for all this to then hope to be able to fight, that the fight doesn't fall through, that something doesn't happen, happen to you. Blake, you're gonna fight for, for a Lights Out title. COVID happened. So talk to us about all the work that these fighters, these youngsters put in. You know, this is just the tip of the iceberg, what the people see inside of the cage. They don't know the countless hours of dieting, training your striking, training your grappling, training your MMA, your uh, sparring sessions. There's just so much that goes into it that th what happens here is just the tip of the iceberg and this is the fun part. Yeah, let's see the, the highlights of this youngster from Texas, now 3-0, Jake Woodley, a very game Ramirez, but Woodley, he got the better of him early on, especially with this takedown. And then here Woodley working the back, landing shots. He couldn't put Ramirez away, though. You know, Ramirez is as tough as they come. It's one of the things I love about Mexican fighters is there's just not an ounce of quit in them. And he just kept pushing forward, bloodied here, and continued to come in and bring the fight to Jake Woodley. That wrestling, though, by Jake Woodley, this kid is going to be a problem and a tough puzzle to solve. Woo! Jake Woodley now 3-0. That was our co-main event. He's Blake Bulletproof Troop. I am Pablo Alcina. We still have one more fight to go, the main event. And here's a little preview because lights out. We don't only bring you great fights. We bring you great personalities. My name is Enrique Marte, and I fight at the arena in San Diego. My name is Gilbert Nakatani. I'm fighting out at Aragon Training Academy in Pasadena, California. This dude's tough, and I know he's going to come out, and he got energy in the first round. He has a tendency to slow down throughout the round. So, it's probably gonna happen later in the fight. I'm always prepared for three rounds, mentally and physically. 
Uh, I trained my butt off so I could get in there and, and show my skills to the world. But uh, I feel like I could get a finish, you know? I feel confident in my ability to push the pace of the fight. I'll, I'll leave it at that. I go in there with every ounce of my heart and I leave it all in the cage. Yeah, choking people or like breaking arms is cool, but like, I don't know, punching people and seeing their eyes be all, like, you know, it's like a deer in the headlights. It's crazy. In the cage, anything can happen. This is why not too many people fight MMA. <laughs> it's dangerous, but it's also fun, you know? You just gotta get in there and protect yourself at all costs and go in there with the, the mindset of getting my hand raised. I think you're gonna have to practically kill me, you know? I'm excited about Pablo. I cannot wait for this main event. Main events coming up next. Blake, Bulletproof Troop. I am Pablo Alcina. And by the way, you're going to hear where you can see him fight also. We're going to talk about that after the fight. But we have the main event coming up next. Nakatani Marte lights out Extreme Fighting 13. The main event is next. Welcome to the Lights Out Cage, Enrique Martin. Enrique Marte entering first. He said if he's going to beat me, he's going to have to practically have to kill me. Yeah, so Enrique Hawk hands Marte. Watch a good amount of footage on this guy yesterday, and here is bulletproof troops, bullet points for victory for Enrique Hawk hands Marte. Number one, keep the fight at range and on the feet. He does not want to turn this into a grappling match against CIF state champion wrestler Gilbert Nakatani. Number two, establish the jab. If he's at long range, really pump that jab out there and make Gilbert Nakatani respect it and feel it. And then third, let his whole hands fly. Once this has become a distance fight and he's been able to pump a few big jabs into Gilbert Nakatani's face to then follow up with some big power shots looking for the knockout. Those were Blake Bulletproof Troops' keys to victory. This one should be a fun one, Gilbert Nakatani. He's fought in the Lights Out cage four times before. Won't be easy against 
Enrique Marte. Yeah, this kid has some heavy hands. Calls himself Hulk hands because he throws with intentions to hurt. Let's go to Tyson. And now, please welcome to the Lights Out cage, Gilbert Nakatani. And here is the man I've been wanting to watch all night, fan favorite Gilbert Nakatani, making his fifth walk into the Lights Out Street Fighting Cage. He won at Lights Out 2. He won in Lights Out Extreme Fighting 5. He won in Lights Out Extreme Fighting 6 and Lights Out 7. Two wins by submission, two wins by TKO. And now he's back in the cage, born in West Covina, California. Never been to West Covina. Anybody's out there, invite me. I'll head on out. You ever been to West Covina? I have. Inland Empire. But, so I actually commented Gilbert knocked on his last three fights, and I've been watching this kid since his amateur days. So it's easy for me to write bulletproof troops, bullet points for victory for Gilbert Nakatani. Number one, lots of feints and level changes. This is gonna find his openings so that later on he's able to take his opponent down without having to go in and risk eating some Hulk hands to the face. Number two, be patient, fake your way in, find your openings, and then utilize it, pull the trigger when it's the right time. Three, close the distance. Utilize a bunch of fakes like you're trying to come in, find your opening, be patient about it, but then close the distance, wrap Hulk hands up, and take him down. Gilbert Nakatani is a CIF state wrestling champion here in California, and I believe that his wrestling will play a major role in his first round finish tonight of Hulk hands. Oh, you're calling it in the first round. I've been watching this kid for a very long time, and like I said, I think it is just a matter of time until he becomes a champion here at Lights Out Extreme Fighting. Definitely deserves a shot. Which Lights Out Extreme Fighting did you last fight in? I fought on number three. I was the co-main event fighting for the LXF 205-pound belt. And interestingly enough, he fought on LXF 5, which happened after COVID. I was supposed to fight on LXF 5 as the main event, fighting for the heavyweight title. COVID happened, and March 13th, 2020 was supposed to be LXF 5, but the world shut down on the 12th. And Pablo, I'll be honest, I still kind of want that belt. I still think you have one more fight, one more pro MMA fight in you. But if you want to see wrestling superstar, National Wrestling Alliance superstar, Blake Bulletproof Troop, again, he was and still is a pro MMA fighter, but you're also National Wrestling Alliance wrestling superstar. Where can we see you, Blake? So I got something coming up soon, but let's talk about these killers inside of the cage, Pablo. Enrique Marte, 27 years old. Gilbert Nakatani, 30 years old but he's got the face of a teenager. He's got the voice of a little kid, but don't let those that face fool you. He's got furious power. 126 pounds for Nakatani. Let's go for our official presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now time for the main event of the evening. This bout will be three five-minute rounds in the flyweight division. This bout is being brought to you by Fubo Sports. And now, introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This fighter stands five feet, three inches tall. He weighed in at 124 pounds. He represents the Arena MMA with a mixed martial arts record of three wins and two defeats. He hails from Point Loma, California. Please welcome Enrique Martin. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner stands five feet, five inches tall. He weighed in at 126 pounds. He represents Aragon MMA and the Syndicate MMA. He has a mixed martial arts record of four wins and only one defeat. He hails from West Covina, California. Please welcome Gilbert Nagatomi. Everybody the referee for this bout will be Mike Beltran. Time for our main event. Marte Nakatani. Lights out, Extreme Fighting 13. Alongside Blake, Bulletproof Troop. I am Pablo Alcina. 
Yeah, these boys are ready. And the fight is underway. They're touching hands. These no. boys were ready to go right before that bell rang. You can see it in their eyes. Gilbert Nakatani's a relatively fast starter, as you can see right there. I want to see him be patient, though, because if he's able to wrap his opponent up, I believe that he will be able to finish the fight shortly after. Nakatani taller, longer reach, but here comes Marte going forward. Snuck in the right. Nakatani responding with the right of his own. Kick to the head. Swing up top by Marte. That didn't miss my mark. Yeah, you see, that's why they call him Hulk hands. He is throwing those things. Liking the fight. Full confidence by Marte. Nakatani has won four times before. No nerves for him and everybody on their feet cheering for this great fight. Yeah, and a beautiful head kick and then followed up by the low oh. kick by Gilbert Nakatani. It was blocked with Hulk Hand's right hand, but you can't take too many of those on the forearm. Ooh, that was Ooh. a chopping kick there to the calf, too. Didn't check it in time. He did fresh. Nakatani's good with his legs and his fists. Strong again down below. Yeah, chopping that kick in there. The third to the left ankle and leg of Marte. Well, now he's switching his stance and throwing to the inside. Ooh! All okay, hands throwing hard. Throwing. Combination, Marte connected. Nakatani threw one punch too many and he ate a left. What a main event. Man, Hulk hands throw so hard. No wonder he is living up to his nickname. Wow, Enrique Martin impressing me a lot more than his record. He's only has one win, but he's looking good in there. Nakatani gets that kick blocked. You know, I think if Nakatani went for a takedown, the Martin would be a lot more um, hesitant to be moving forward as quickly as he is. He's just walking Gilbert Nakatani down. Yeah, but Nakatani just split his right eyelid completely open, and it's going right into the eye of Marte. And now the Muay Thai clinch and knees oh. by Nakatani. Fantastic display of kickboxing by Gilbert Nakatani. I am actually a little bit surprised to see Enrique Marte going for a takedown attempt. Yeah, but that cut is very, very bad and it's affecting Marte a lot. Blake, when you're fighting, you have blood trickling into your eye. How does that affect you? You know, I will, for me, I get more in the moment. I'm sitting there fighting for my life, but that's just me and I'll fight to the death. Oh, Nakatani strong overhand right. They're connected as well. I'd like to see Nakatani go back to those leg kicks. Now that we're seeing Enrique Marte slow down just a little bit here, I'd be chop, chop. Every time he came down and set weight on that, I would start chopping at that back. Yeah, but Nakatani knows that he's having trouble since he keeps wiping the eye, so he's opening up more punches, and he threw a nice elbow as well. I think he wants to keep swinging towards that left eye. Yeah, definitely looking for a highlight real finish. Ooh, nice leg kick back by Marte, and then Gilbert Nakatani Ooh. again returns with the kick. Ooh, One of the best move. referees in there, looking at it closely, looking at that eye closely, seeing if he needs to stop it. Saying fight on. Nakatani keeps punishing Marte. Yeah, you saw Marte get out of the way of that last one. I'd like to see him start stepping in and trying to throw a big hand back instead of checking the kick or just absorbing it. Ooh, nice one-two from Nakatani. Marte responding with a hard low kick. Yeah, these guys have been chopping at each other and throwing some very heavy leather. What a great fight. Fight of the night without a doubt. We still have a minute 30 to go in round one. Yes, it's been a very competitive fight. I'm surprised we're not seeing at least some threatening of the wrestling by Gilbert Nakatani. Oh, vicious uppercut that didn't miss by much. They call him Hulk hands. He's definitely throwing. Oh, and eats another right. And that eye continues. To gush blood. Yeah, he continues to wipe that. You seem to do that every two to three seconds almost. Yeah. And I think Nakatani's trying to time it when he wipes it to throw in a punch. And he's going to get it right once. It's very smart to attack. That's, that's your window. Why not try to capitalize on it, especially if he's doing it repeatedly? Ooh. I'm surprised that we have seen Enrique Marte walk and just like these kicks are nothing because Gilbert Nakatani <laughs> has been chopping those things in there. And Nakatani taller, so he's got the longer reach, legs and feet. And Marte just keeps going forward like if nothing. Well, I'd like to see uh, Nakatani throw a head kick here, the left head kick. He switched stances, which now open, it's called the open stance when one's southbound, one's orthodox. 
Final five seconds of round one. Oh, nice uppercut by Marte that connected. Nakatani responding. And that's the end of round one. What a thrilling round. Blake, you promised finishing in, in round numero uno. I was hoping for more, and I got a little bit more. And I'm happy you were wrong, Blake. You know, happy you were wrong. Me too, because this has been an extremely exciting fight. We haven't seen any of the CIF state champion wrestlers wrestling out of Gilbert Nakatani. But I am not mad at it because it has been a fantastic battle exchanges between these two competitors. And just throw it in the pocket and gunslinging sometimes. Yeah, and then those those straight jabs with those gloves, it can really open up eyelids. You don't see on jabs on from boxers opening up eyes so much, but with these MMA gloves, we saw it in the last fight, and we saw it again here. Yes, and elbows as well. Look, Gilbert Nakatani threw a handful of elbows in the round. I'm not 100% sure exactly what opened that cut up, but like you're saying, it is so easy to open up faces when you have small gloves or when you hit just bone to face. Especially elbow to face. Yeah, you know, or knee. Yeah. Where it's just like bone, skin, skin, bone, where, man, it just tears open. Round two, Marte put up a good fight. Nakatani, you too. What do you have? We got 10 minutes to go in this main event. I love that the way they're looking in each other's eyes, ready to just go to war with each other. And that's a thing of respect. Yeah, no shaking hands in round two. We did that in round one. Let's go to fight. Here comes Marte. Nakatani looking for the takedown. Marte looking for a guillotine. See, now even just a little bit of threatening of the takedown doesn't even necessarily have to continue to go there. But the more Marte moves forward, the easier he'll be to take down. You take a guy down once like that, oh. and now he's a little bit more hesitant to come at you in that same manner. Nice combination by Nakatani. Who'd you give the round one to? Nakatani, uh, it was a, a, I wouldn't say by a ton. He's definitely chopping a lot more leg kicks in, but the blood. I think visuals is a big thing, and damage to a fighter's face, in my opinion, should be one of the biggest indicators of who won the round. I agree with you on that one. Although there's some people that cut easier than other people, so lots of times you don't want, you know, a fighter who cuts easy to get deducted. But in a case like this, where one is perfect, the other one's gashed, uh, I would go your way as well. Yeah, I agree 100% with that, that some guys, that's why it's all circumstantial. But that's one of the crazy things about mixed martial arts, where it's subjective and opinion-based judging, where it's not like basketball, where it scores 80 to 70, it's clear-cut winner. Oh. Again. Ooh. Ooh. Marte throws heavy hands, but Nakatani's reflex is just perfect. Now Marte trying to change it up, looking for a takedown. Yeah, I'm really surprised to see Marte going with the takedowns, and it makes me wonder if he feels like he's getting the worst of these exchanges, which I also feel that way. But for him to go for the wrestling on the state wrestling champion when he's Hulk hands makes me think that he might be starting to doubt that he's winning. Oh! oh, oh. Beautiful spin and elbow by Nakatani. Nakatani's doing a great job controlling the range and keeping the fight where he wants to do it. And you can see Hulk hands rushing forward, and that's how he landed that spinning back elbow. Look at Marta again trying to take down a high school wrestling champ. Yeah, I'd like to see Nakatani. There's 250 left in the second round. Maybe go for another takedown. Even Ooh. if you don't try and really keep it that long, oh. because then the guy's not going to come at you as recklessly, in my opinion. Huge cut on top of the eye. Huge cut below the same eye. Nakatani. Damaging Marte. That spinning back oh. elbow, he's had success with oh. it. Oh. Left and right. Oh. Nakatani. And Marte, what heart by Marte. What a fight. Marte now going for it. Man, those spinning back elbows were landing. He landed three times and continued the forward pressure. And it's almost like Marte heard me talking about it being easier to take down a guy as he moves forward. Yeah, without a doubt, fight of the night. And it's the main event. That's how we do things here in Lights Out Extreme Fighting. Marte going over the top with that right. And with the amount of power and how hard Marte throws punches, you can never count this guy out. Oh, and that one connected. Low with a kick to the ankle, then a left hook to the head. Maybe a little too late for Marte, but hey, plenty of time left. We're just barely now past the halfway point of this fight. Yeah, Nakatani looks like he's really found his rhythm. He's in his zone. He's sitting down waiting for him to come in and picking his moments. That's you can see him right here looking for his spot. All right, come on in. Bam, and picking his strikes now, which is very high level. 
it has been fun to watch the development of Gilbert Nakatani and his evolution from the end of his amateur career Ooh. to now where he's at, a very high-level pro. Hard shot to the body by Marte. Marte's heavy hands are vicious, Blake. If he can get one clean one, this could flip quickly. Nakatani solid defending, though. Yeah, I want to see Nakatani maybe go back to that spinning back elbow the next time Marte comes forward like this. Like right here, you know Marte's going to come in and throw. Bam, try and time that spinning back up like Oof. that just there. Yeah, that's the first time he's missed three times he's landed that. I wonder if he'll do it with the with the fist instead of the elbow, giving him a little bit more length. You know, that might be the next step because Marte obviously smartened up to announce, keeping just a little bit of distance, able to avoid it that time. Had it been an extended arm, Pablo, might have landed. Let's see if he goes for it. 30 seconds to go in round two, but credit to Marte. Face bloodied. We mentioned Dolph Lundgren and Flip the Coin, the new show on Fubo. Well, the blood on Marte, he looks right out of a movie. What heart, passion by Marte. And he just keeps moving forward. And you can't teach that kind of like grit and toughness. You know, being punched in the face sucks the same for all of us. It's just a matter of how much do you let it affect what you're trying to do. And Marte has not let it slow him down. One step, looking for the finish here. Lights out extreme fighting 13. And actually it looks like the blood is coagulating some because he's not wiping it as much as he did before. Look at Marte. Oh! Yeah, I like this. These this is <laughs> these dudes are in there fighting each other. This is not just a mixed martial arts competition. These are two dudes fighting each other inside the lights out extreme fighting cage. Yeah, it is a it is a match, a fight, a combat sport, but sometimes it's a brawl. And that's what this is turning into. And the way Marte's looking at him, he's like, don't stop this fight. Don't stop this fight. He's like, no, no, no. I'm already cut, I'm already bruised, I'm already bleeding, give me my five minutes. Ooh, there's one of those spinning back elbows that Gilbert Nakatani landed several times in the third round. Bang, there's Ooh, another one, That's wow. amazing, Marte's strong, dude. That was clean, Blake, that should have that finished it. A spinning back strike attack is so powerful, gets so much momentum coming in, and then like you were saying, you land on the tempo or that part of the head, and it's, I don't know how his lights didn't go out. Uh, look, look at the eyelid. Wow, and Marte's still there, and he has not taken his eyes off of Nakatani. These five minutes are gonna be a thriller. Marte has got that dog in him, baby. Oh, they're having the doctor come in and take a look at Marte. I don't think that they should stop this fight. He seems fine. Cut does not look like it's impeding his vision, but the, the doctor's much closer than I am. But still, yeah, we're continuing this fight. Great refereeing he still had to do due diligence and let's get this fight going it's the same cut he had at the beginning and he fought two rounds with it do not stop it now says Marte yeah Mike Beltran is one of the best referees in the business and round three is underway Marte out of the blue corner cuts over his eye cuts below his eye Nakatani looking for a fifth win in lights out Man, these boys are going to war. The way round two ended, they're staring at each other and people having to get between them. Round three is going to be more of the same. This has been a gritty battle between these two competitors. Oh, hard kick that Marte nearly caught. Marte keeps going four strong punches by Marte. Yeah, you see the power in that. Whoa! Nakatani responding. What a fight. Oh, Karate Kid style, but with the knees kicked by Nakatani. You know, I think that jumping knee was a very smart attack by Nakatani. I'd like to see him see if he gets this takedown. Oh, and he gets the takedown. Gilbert Nakatani says, this is my house. Lights out, cage is my house. But he's got to finish it, Marte now. Now it's Marte going for the back. Nakatani Na flips it over. Nakatani is going to dump him right here. I watched him do this in his professional debut. He is such a high-level wrestler. I'm surprised we didn't. Oh, wow. I am surprised that he led. Oh, Marte's got a heart of a lion. The little fella still swinging. Man, he has just been walking through some damage and staying in Gilbert Nakatani's face Ooh. nonstop. What a scrap this has been. The cut opened up again. Luckily, it's on the eyebrow, not on the eyelid. So it impedes his vision, but I think his eye is not in danger. That's why the fight could keep going. 3.20 to go. Man, Marte is a dog. He just keeps coming forward. 
And I will say, it looks like Nakatani is a little bit tired. His hands are lower. You saw him throw that kick there. It came back relatively slow. And there's still three minutes to go in this one. What a thrilling fight. Yeah, and it looks like Marte is just going to continue to come forward and throw bombs. I would like to see Gilbert Nakatani go back to his wrestling and get on top of Marte here to try and secure the third round. Nakatani has cut up Marte, but he can't cut his heart. And Marte keeps throwing those heavy Hulk hands. Two minutes, 40 seconds to go on this one. Man, Gilbert Nakatani is a stud. I didn't know Enrique Marte before this. I watched some tape on him, but this kid has earned my respect, and I am a Enrique Hogan Marte fan now after this fight. Oh, only three fights for Marte, but yeah, I definitely want to see him again, and he still has two minutes to go. Nakatani, though, wants to win this. He has tons of fans in here rooting for him, screaming his name. Nice one-two by Nakatani. Yeah, both these guys have extensive amateur records, though. Enrique Marte had 11 Marte. amateur Fights. Oh, Marte nearly pulled off the takedown blade. Now a cut on the cheek of Nakatani. Who has more gas in the tank? Ah, did you see he opened up the spin? Yeah. This has been such a back and forth scrap. We still have about 90 seconds left on the clock in our main event for Lights Out Extreme Fighting 13. There's some flyweights that throw punches but these two at 125 pounds they're throwing heavy blows these look like middleweights yeah fight. i cannot believe how hard marte throws see if, if nakatani really tries to drop the hips here it goes for broke if he's able to secure this takedown i think that he'll win this it'll win in this round and potentially the fight in a much safer position oh look at marte still being aggressive i have marte winning this round Round one with moment. Nakatani, How, who do you give round two to? I'd probably give round two to Nakatani also. We had the doctor come looking at between two and three. The damage on Marte's face, but Marte's just coming at him. And it's not like it's an easy, like it has been very competitive and it has been a scrap. Another fight that I would not mind seeing them run it back again later on in the year. What a fight by Marte. What a fight by Nakatani. Final 40 seconds of this main event. Look at Marte going forward, no longer wiping the blood from his eye, just throwing whatever he has left. 30 seconds. This is one of the times where it comes down to how much heart do you have in there and how bad do you want to scrap. And Marte just keeps pressing forward. Such a dog. Final 15, Nakatani. Oh, Nakatani's legs, but I think just from tired, not from getting caught. Final 10 seconds. Marte, Nakatani. Man, this place is loud too. The lights out of Street Fighting fans are loving this main event. I'm standing up and I am applauding these guys. We're on our feet. We are on our feet right here. Good fight by Nakatani. Good fight by Marte. And they are hugging. This was an amazing fight. We might have only one winner, Blake. But I love what we saw from Marte and from Nakatani. Man, what a scrap that was out of these two competitors. And like I said earlier, after a fight, you either have a ton of respect for somebody or none. And you saw the embrace between these two killers respecting each other. Quick break, and we'll be back with more. You're watching Lights Out Extreme Fighting 13. The main event was awesome. We're coming back with the official decision. Lights Out Extreme Fighting, live on FUBO.
Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a big round of applause to both of these Lights Out Gladiators. And now, ladies and gentlemen, after three exciting rounds, judge number one scores about 29-28. Judge number two scores about 30-27. And judge number three scores about 29-28 for your winner by unanimous decision out of the red corner, Gilbert. Great win by Nakatani, winning again inside the lights out extreme fighting cage. He's with Bonnie Jail. Gilbert, yeah, congratulations. First off, what's going through your head right now? What a scrap. Man, all the, every emotion in the world. It takes so much just to get in here. You know, a lot of sacrifice between my life, my family. Uh, it means a lot to come in here and, and represent for my team, my family, my daughter Jade. All, all my supporters, everybody in here, all the fans. Thank I was about you to say, your fans. Thank you. I appreciate every single one of you guys out here. You know, uh, life's about adversity and how you react. Um, I had a little layoff. I came back stronger. I'm um, ready to fight for the belt next. I'm now 5-0 and for Lights Out. I, I deserve a title shot. I, I can't wait to get that belt around my waist. It's been a long time coming. Uh, I'm just grateful, grateful to thank God for this opportunity. And, it, and the sky's the limit. Anybody can do whatever they want in life. Just gotta work hard and believe in yourself. You absolutely worked hard. How hard was it, Gilbert, for you to put pressure early? Uh, it was, it's always tough coming in the cage. You never know what could happen. It's a, it's a dog fight in there. And uh, I just wanted to make sure I, I, I left a statement and, and started strong and finished strong. Um, it's, it's, the sky's the limit. I can't wait to see what's next. Next, maybe a rematch. Fight. Uh, it was a good one, but I, I want to fight for the belt next. And Sean, you listen to this? <laughs> wh whoever it is, doesn't matter. I'm going to come in here and give it all and represent for my family and, and myself and my mom up above. This one's always, always dedicated to her. Uh, she's watching down on me, just like God, and I, I appreciate them all. You're a warrior. You've got heart. Congratulations, Gilbert. You deserve this. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Bonnie. And yeah, Sean Merriman right behind. Nakatani asking for a title shot. I'd love to see it. What an amazing night. Wow. Before we recap this whole night, let's, let's, let's recap this fight. Nakatani, just impressive. But Marte as well. I mean, little fella throwing some mean, vicious blows. Nakatani cut him early, and let's see if we can see where the cut happened. I thought it was from a beautiful jab right there, a straight. Or potentially yeah. one of those spinning back elbows that he landed. I don't know, but he definitely cut him up. And then Nakatani, it looks, oh, right there. That was just a gorgeous one cutting up the cheek. But oh, then man. talk about what Marte did to bounce back from a fight that looked like he was outmatched early. Marte, I thought, was going to get put away in the first round. Because, and it probably has more to do with a biased opinion about how good Nakatani is. But wow, Marte came out, took some damage in round one, and then started really stalking Gilbert Nakatani down and turned it into an absolute dog fight in our main event. Fun fight, amazing night. We began the night with a knockout in 30 seconds, but we saw knockouts, we saw submissions, we saw a little bit of everything tonight. We, we did it. We started the night off with an incredible knockout in maybe 30 seconds. I can't wait to recap this card, because tonight we're some bangers, Pablo. But Blake, before recapping, we want to tell the people that we are just the perfect combo to watch fights with us. Lights Out Extreme Fighting 14 is February 17th. Once again, Blake Bulletproof Troop, Pablo Alcina, the perfect combo of brains and muscles. But Blake, they can see you also in a different type of fight game, not MMA, but tell them where they can see you. So next week, and I have a big pay-per-view professional wrestling match coming up at the National Wrestling Alliance's Paranoia in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I'll be squaring up with Joe Alonzo. So Joe, I know it's the holiday season, but you better have been training, because I'm coming to turn your whole life south. 
MMA fighter, great analyst, and also a National Wrestling Alliance superstar, Blake Bulletproof Troop. I am Pablo Alcina. I've been doing play-by-play -play for everything from the UFC to Major League Baseball to college football. I've seen the best and brightest lights, and I'm telling you, Lights Out is right there with all of them. What Sean Merriman is building is impressive, and we want to recap this whole night. Let's recap here and show you a little bit of everything that we saw on Lights Out Extreme Fighting 13. And it be began with some vicious blows and early. And Pena came up and talked to us also. Talk about this fight. Yeah, so Pena had a nine-year layoff. This guy started fighting before I did. Came back after a nine-year layoff and had a scrap. Brian Shell versus... And this one, I like the Silva also. So Pena won his fight. The Silva put on a beautiful show. I like what I saw from him. Yeah, this was a scrap right here and a fantastic, flawless performance in what is being considered this guy's professional debut. What a place to debut. Lights out, extreme fighting. Definitely think we're going to be seeing him again. And then the action kept coming. And Salvatore Bruno and David Trey Alvarado put on a brilliant fight. Bruno gave it all. Trey Alvarado just a little bit better in the stand-up game. Man, this was fight of the night until the main event happened. Yeah. What a competitive scrap these two guys had earlier on in the evening. Definitely think we're going to be seeing both of these guys fighting again in Lights Out Extreme Fighting. Trey Alvarado got the win. Then Saad Ul Hassan versus Jose Matus, and this was the Saad show. Yeah, did a fantastic job of being patient, finding his moment to get in, planting Matus on the mat, and then vicious ground and pound from the top, forcing Mylon Ayers to step in and stop the bout early on in round one. In the co-main event, it was Jake Woodley making a second fight for Lights Out Extreme Fighting. This one a lot tougher than the first one, but we saw what Woodley brings. He brings power, he brings wrestling, and he brings great cardio. And he's evolving as a fighter. He was very one-dimensional being a college wrestler. We saw him come in tonight, throw a handful of strikes. We saw him eat some punches and get a little bit tested. This was not an easy win for him, and this kid is continuing to move along. I'm excited for what the future holds for Jake Woodley. And all those fights were amazing. We even had Sean Merriman for an interview, so we had it all. And then the main event happened, and what a fight. Fight of the night, without a doubt. Hats off to Marte and Nakatani. Yeah, this was a scrap for the Lights Out of Street Fighting record books. I thought it would have been a first round finish, but no. These boys had a back and forth scrap that went all the way to the final bell. Yeah, Marte delivering some blows, but Nakatani getting that takedown. He started strong, he finished strong, gave credit to his mom and the Lord up above, and another great win by Nakatani. He's fought four times, now five times, five wins, and he wants a title shot. Definitely, I think Nakatani deserves it. Yeah, I, I would have said I thought this kid could have been a champion relatively recently, but the future definitely holds Lights Out Extreme fighting jewelry for Gilbert Nakatani. Thank you to everyone watching us on Fubo. Shout out to David Pagan, executive at Fubo Sports, for having us and having Lights Out Extreme Fighting. He's Blake Bulletproof Troop. I am Pablo Alcina, the boss, the man, the myth, the legend, Sean Merriman, who runs this whole show. He's building a monster. And thank you to everyone in production who makes this show possible. Bonnie Jill Laughlin with the great interviews and Tyson Johnson with the cage announcing. Once again, he's Blake. I'm Pablo. Bye-bye, baby. See you February 17th.